the CBS Sports family of networks, the highest standard in sports television, including the CBS Sports Network, Showtime Sports, CBSSports.com, and the CBS Sports Radio Network, the best in sports online, on radio, and on the air. CBS Sports, expect it here. Welcome to Army-Navy, America's Game, presented by USAA. This is the Home Depot College Football on CBS Sports. Today, the 114th renewal of Army versus Navy. It is a blustery afternoon in Philadelphia, but that will not affect the celebration of this 114th game. Let's go down to public address announcer Dan Baker. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 years ago last month, our nation lost its leader when President John F. Kennedy was tragically assassinated days before the Army-Navy football game. At this time, we ask that you direct your attention to the video board for a special feature. 50 years ago, America lost its leader, a military man and a football fan, President John F. Kennedy, a decorated veteran of the United States Navy. Kennedy celebrated his love for the military and football by attending two Army-Navy games during his time as president. Two weeks after Kennedy was assassinated, the 1963 Army-Navy game was played in his memory. Fifty years after that memorable game, we remember President John F. Kennedy. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation led by Father Edson Wood, chaplain at the United States Military Academy, and please remain standing for our national anthem, as sung by the combined West Point Glee Club and United States Naval Academy Men's and Women's Glee Clubs and Gospel Choir. May we pray. Eternal God, as we remember President Kennedy's naval career in World War II, his heroic performance in the Solomon Islands in 1943, and his dedication to this game some 50 years ago, Army and Navy meet once again on a field of friendly strife. Bless the cadets and midshipmen of the academies Give them a deep commitment to service and dedication. Let our academies always and forever make this nation proud. Sustain all the members of our armed forces and their families throughout the world, especially those in areas of tremendous risk. Be merciful to those who have given their lives to keep this nation free. Fill each heart in this stadium today with the conviction that what we do here shows the world the deep beauty of a free and proud people. And finally, Heavenly Father, hear once again the constant prayer of our hearts. Bless the United States of America and those who live and die to make it for all time the land of the free and the home of the brave. Amen.
Our national anthem, whenever sung or played, always seems to evoke emotions in all of us, never more so than when sung by the combined glee clubs of the U.S. Military Academy and the U.S. Naval Academy. They meet on the playing field for the 114th time. The Home Depot College Football on CBS. The Army-Navy game presented by USAA is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Aflac. AT&T. And by USAA, who along with the fans here in Philadelphia, salute America's game. think of Army football, I don't think of just the family that I have on the team, but I think of my father because he played on the same team. My goal here is to become a United States Marine. My goal is to serve my country with honor and become an astronaut. I'll be an armor officer, just like my grandfather before me. My goal is to serve this country and to make my family proud. Forged deep into the bedrock of each American generation, these two institutions were formed to train leaders of character. The success of their mission, spanning the history of this land, United in the defense of their country, they stand apart in only one place. When you show up as a plea, that's the first thing that you learn is beat Army. That's the game, like, you have to win. It's an army Navy game. I, it kind of goes without saying how much it means. Each year since 1890, the ultimate brotherhood becomes the ultimate rivalry, a symbol of teamwork, commitment, and valor. It stirs patriotism and when called upon, serves to heal. The game represents so much more than just one team versus another. We play for those fighting in battle. We play for our brothers. It's a bond that you can't describe and you can't get anywhere else. It means everything to me. To the winner, the privilege of singing second. It's an honor that has eluded Army for 11 straight years, with last year's loss being the toughest of all. Nothing going on this one. It. Mm. Each year, it seems we get closer and closer, and eventually, you know, the dam has to give, and we, and we have to win this game. When we, when we do end this streak, um, it's going to mean a whole lot. The moment is at hand once again. On this day, allies become adversaries. My goal is to beat Navy everything we do. Go Navy, beat Army, beat Army. Go Army, beat Navy. Go Navy, beat Army. Beat Navy. Do it not only for us, but for all those before us. For the 114th time, it's Army, Navy. And we welcome you to Army, Navy, America's Game. Presented by USAA. This is the Home Depot College Football on CBS Sports. Today, the 114th renewal of Army versus Navy. Moments ago, first on the field, the midshipman of the United States Naval Academy. And right behind them, After Navy, or rather after Army, Navy. And the Army Black Knights. Apache helicopters flying overhead. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson. 11 losses in a row for Army to Navy. None more painful than the one they suffered last year. Army was going in for the go-ahead touchdown and the mishandled handoff between Trent Steelman and Larry Dixon led to this unbelievably poignant scene for the four-year quarterback who had tried valiantly to lead his team to victory in this game, never to be successful. 
Now, Gary, they say this game stands alone. It's hard to believe that. Yeah, it really is. Everybody's saying the right thing. You know, the coaches are, the players are. But this game doesn't happen in a vacuum. And I think that Army has it in their head a little bit, even though they say they don't. We've seen in the last two years they played Navy toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But Army has been Army's worst enemy. Too many turnovers. And for them to win this game, they have to handle the ball, number one. And number two, that, you know, I think they'll move the ball on offense okay. They got to stop the quarterback for Navy. Keenan Reynolds is a, becoming a great player. They need to stop his play. How do they do that? Well, it's not going to be easy. Last year he came in here a little bit nervous in this football game. Kind of finished that game with a win by the, that last drive. But he's gotten better. He runs the ball, he throws the ball, and he really is the difference in this football game and the center of the game. We're out ready for the coin toss, a very special silver dollar to be used. It was the silver dollar that was to have been tossed by President John F. Kennedy 50 years ago after the game had been played and the different coin used. Secretary of Army Cyrus Vance sent this coin, the silver dollar, and a letter to Tom Lynch, who was the captain of the Naval Academy team. It is being used in the coin toss today. Let's go down there right now. Moments ago, Tracy Wilson with Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel. Mr. Secretary, today we are remembering that 1963 game to finally use that coin for its intended purpose. What does that mean? Well, I think it's representative of our country, the high esteem that we hold all those who serve our country in. To have that coin used today, recognizing the sacrifices and service of generations of Americans. This is your first Army-Navy game that you've been in attendance for. How has this experience been for you? Well, there is really nothing quite like this. I've been to games at the Naval Academy at West Point, not this one, but to bring our country together like this uh, in such an important way, it's just, it's fun, it's America, it represents everything good about this country. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Enjoy it. Thank you very much. Turn back to you. Tracy, thank you. You can see uh, the weather conditions are blustery at best. We expect light snow to fall from now until the conclusion of the game. Uh, and I don't think it will. Oh, come on, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Army. Won the toss and deferred. Navy after this 11 game win streak. The first game played in 1890, and this is the 85th meeting in various venues in Philadelphia. You couldn't draw a prettier picture, could you, at the start of this thing? Daniel Gochowski kicks it off. Marcus Thomas will let it float through the end zone. Touchback. And let's introduce you to the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. We begin with Keenan Reynolds. Well, we've seen Keenan and talked to Keenan over the phone about this football game. He admitted that last year, as cool as he looked on the field, he was nervous for the start of the game, and his play showed it early in the football game. And the midshipman will begin from the 25-yard line. Noah Copeland, who's missed the last two games with injuries, Gets the start. And he lays the block for Reynolds, who completes it out of the right side to DeBrandon Sanders, number 21. Well, the team that threw the least passes in the country opens up the pass. How about that? <laughs> well, Ken Niamatololo indicated to us in a phone conversation yeah. they might need to go to the air a little bit. Well, you know, they, uh, Army was so successful last year stopping this ground game. He said we may loosen these guys up first. Darius Staten is the deep back. They run from the eye on this one. Staten comes left. Big hole. 
driven down but only at the 35 and let's check Navy's offensive line. Heat, Vins, Fleming, Zuzek, and Gaston up front. Joffrey Whiteside, one of the running backs. It's been exam week at Navy. Casey Bellina, the senior, had two of them. One of them in underwater acoustics. Should and have, the head coach. Yeah. Should have been snow. Yeah, acoustics. should have been. Ken Niamatololo in his sixth season. Undefeated against Army. First down 10. Pitch left side to Brandon Sanders. And let's check the defensive alignment now for the cadets. Cole Glover, Eugenie Kelly. There's the key. Jeffrey Bacon, who uh, has played safety most of this year, moves into a linebacker spot today. It's something he has done before. Mackie, Holloway, Jenkins, Talbert, Hayden Pierce takes. Jeffrey's team uh, place on the uh, safety position. Second and four. Whoa, oh, man. Whoa. Big time. Richard Glover, number 98. Well, you know, one of the things that Navy talked to us was about that Army had given them a new look every year on defense. Navy is trying to give the new look to Army. That's the second isolation play from the I formation they've run. This time, Glover said, yeah, we practiced against this too. Rich Ellerson who as a defensive coordinator at Hawaii helped recruit Ken Niamatololo to Hawaii and uh, had a solid start a couple of years Here's ago. Here's the key to the game right here. Third down. Can they slow down Keenan Reynolds? Quentin Singleton. Reynolds designed quarterback draw. And the answer, at least for now, is no. Yeah. Well, you know, he really is the difference maker on the field. You know, if there's one position, maybe a little advantage last year went to Army with Trent Steelman. This year, you got a veteran quarterback who is ready to play in this football game. And I think he wants to atone for the way he started out last year's game. A lot of different variables with that guy and the trust that the offense has in him right now. That was a game of 12. It's first down and 10 opening drive of the ball game. And Navy has moved across midfield. First down 10 at the 46. Pitch at the very last moment. Darius Staten, number 20. One of the reasons that uh, this pitch becomes so effective is because you actually lead the man downhill with the pitch. You don't want to throw that up 45 degree angle. When the option ball first started, people were trying to lateral that ball backwards. Now they lead them upfield and it becomes an attacking pitch. Thomas Holloway is the injured player for the cadets. Yeah. Senior from Birmingham, Alabama. And he and it's been more of the same for injuries for Army. He missed three games with an ankle injury this year. They were excited to have him back. Pick also, out pick out one of those red circles. It could be any one of those, right? Yeah. Justin Trimble is on to take his place. Trimble wears number five. They are giving this Army team a lot of different looks early in this game to spread the defense out. Yeah, three wides on this first down play. Backs in the eye. Second down and seven. There's Reynolds. Missed the handoff. Yes, he did. Stopped at the 43-yard line. James Kelly, number 43, and Jeffrey Bacon, the linebacker, today. They, they were pulling number 57, Bins, around that time and just running the ISO play that everybody does. And just a miscommunication. They do so many things well in that triple option. You can't believe Navy has had as much practice on these base plays. And that brings up a third down, third down six. There's Thomas Holloway on the bench. Yeah, last time they were pretty with a three-man rush. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they might dial up a blitz here and try to take some space away from Reynolds. Three down. It looks like the linebacker is coming. They creep up. Yes, two of them are. He Ooh. comes left and good, it's incomplete. Good throw would have been intercepted. Josh Jenkins, number 39, defending. And if it would have been thrown well, it would have been picked off. You know, that's a running back out there, Sanders, number 21. And Jenkins is used to covering wide receivers. It was not a good route. And it's a good thing Reynolds did not throw it on target. Good stop for the Navy Army defense. That brings on Pablo Beltran, number 11, a junior. 
from Humble, Texas. And the deep man is Scott Williams for Army. Interesting field position here. Army needs to stay awake. A bit of a rugby kick, and that's over the head of Williams. Bounces into the oh, end zone. Two yards deep. Yes. <laughs> wow. Touchback. Well, we have uh, opened the 114th playing of this game. Keenan Reynolds. Terry Baggett about to get his first turn on the field. We welcome you back to Philadelphia. First Army Black Knight possession of the ball game. They take over at their own 25 in the midst of a snowstorm. And the quarterback is the sophomore A.J. Shure, who came on in relief for the last game that Army played. Ran for four touchdowns despite a loss at Hawaii. Toss right side. Tar Terry Bagham. And let's check the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. Not really a surprise that A.J. Schur gets this start. No, his second half against Hawaii. And I remember, Schur was projected to be their starter anywhere. anyway. He got hurt in the offseason training in the summer. Not an injury you hear a lot about with quarterback. He was moving artillery and sprained his ankle. That's a new one. Yeah. You don't get that stuff in the SEC. No. <laughs> a little scramble for the ball. And there is uh, Angel Santiago who has started every game until this one. And, and Angel's a little better mechanic with the triple option. So as the weather kind of gets a factor, we may see Angel yet in this football game. Or Snow Angels, one of the two. <laughs> Third down one. Larry Dixon is in the lineup. That's yes. good for Army. And that's a surprise. Navy did not expect him. Wearing number 26. Option left. Sure, seems they got it. First down, 10. Tackle made by DJ Sargenti, number 52. One of the base plays for the Army football team is this quarterback ISO from off their triple option play. And, you know, one of the things that Dixon does well is block. So even if he can't carry the ball a lot with that hurt wrist, he's still valuable as a blocker. Trenton Turrentine running back on the right side. Sure. Oh, it slipped out of his hand. That is a fumble. And oh, Dixon goes save. back to save possession. Yes, it did. Came right out, didn't it? I thought maybe it was tipped. You called it a slip, and it was right. Slipped right away, and Army obviously very, very fortunate to get this football back because usually the defense has the big advantage. They're facing that fumbled ball, and Army has to come back and try to find it. Well, how ironic that Dixon recovered the fumble because it was Larry Dixon who has taken full responsibility for the late-game fumble and the handoff exchange with Trent Steelman last year that ultimately led to Army's loss. The option and the pitch. It goes to Tony Giovanelli, number 19. Check the rest of the Army offense now. Keim, Shoemaker, Powis, Reichert, and Gilbert, the offensive line. There's Dixon, Baggett, Giovanelli. The leading receiver is Xavier Moss, number 86. And Siobhan Lawrence, number 21, on the other side. Michael Keim, the captain and the best of the offensive linemen. Now, considering all the turnovers Army's had the last couple of years, they need to be very, very careful here. On third and 19. And they are. With yeah, a they are. Call. Sure runs into his own man and then gets popped by Chris Johnson, number 46. I think so far both teams have avoided the disaster early in the passing game. Reynolds could have had a quick out intercepted, threw it high, and obviously the fumble right there. Both sides, I think the weather's a little bigger factor here. You know, our TV doesn't look as bad as it does in person. The wind is whipping, and the ball must be slick. John Lynch is the deep man to return the punt, he hopes, of Alex Tardew. 
And there will be no return of this one. Ball is marked at the 32 yard line. 39 yard punt. Nothing on the return. We'll be right back. We're scored us 7:51 remaining in the first quarter of play. Now let's take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. Well, all year we've been following Auburn and their success and their version of the triple option and how well of a season they pulled off. Well, you know what Auburn was running from the shotgun is exactly what the two Naval Academies do. Remember the dive play to Trey Mason? Here's the dive play to the fullback. Both teams use the fullback on the first edge of the triple option. Okay. Nick Marshall keeps it from the shotgun. Well, we've got two guys who are going to keep it for Army, for Navy, excuse me, Keenan Reynolds. The quarterback keeper will be a play that will be on tap all day. Remember, he's rushed for over 200 yards in two games this year for Navy. And then the outside edge of this, the perimeter pressure done one way by the team in the national championship. The way they get the outside pressure, they just lateral it same way. Army does it one way. And Navy does it the same way. The triple option, one from the shotgun, playing for the national championship, and the other playing each other, Army and Navy. And I'm guessing conditions will be a bit brighter in the game in Pasadena in January, Florida State, Auburn. First down and 10, second possession for the midshipmen now. Reynolds pumps once, looks deep, he's got a man open. And it's incomplete to Brandon Sanders. Yeah, again, that's a running back that is giving that, it's an appearance of four wide receivers. But Brandon Sanders on the underthrown ball, it wasn't really back shoulder, it ended up being back shoulder. You could see Sanders did not react to the ball the way a skilled wide receiver would. That would have been an easy stop and catch. So Reynolds is now one of three, brings up second down. And 10, Noah Copeland, number 34. Yeah, the wind is really going left to right across the, the TV set right here, too. So that ball really died. Reynolds keeps it. And uh, let's check in with Trace for an update. Yeah, guys, Army Captain Thomas Holloway not out there right now. He is in the locker room. Doctors were working on his right shoulder. Army does not provide injury information, but if I see anything more, I'll pass it along. All right, thank you, Trace. Justin I, I, Trimble is I would be now. disappointed if they gave out information if <laughs> Army did. Yeah. Right, I mean, if they, they got to keep secrets. Army. Good, good point by you. <laughs> right. I mean, if it's easier than the SEC. Yeah. yeah. Trace, come on, it's <laughs> Army. <laughs> Third and six, 7.05 to go, opening quarter. Another quarterback draw. And uh, unsuccessful one, Robert Coe. Another play by Coe. And you know, there was no linebacker there. If Coe does not make this play, it's going to go for at least 15 yards. He runs right around the offensive tackle. Kind of goes around if you ever watch it. Those guys run around hula hoops now as they're training. You got to make that tight turn, and Coe just did that. They lay those hula hoops down on the field and they run around them as fast as they can. You still do that? Not, not me, but I watch. With, with the grandkids? No, well, no? soon. No, okay. <laughs> another week. Fourth and five. <laughs> and another grandchild. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's. Uh, yeah, into the wind. If you yeah. don't hit them good, it's going to stop. Pablo Beltran with a poor punt affected. By the wind, 29-yard punt. Yeah. Shove me once. I'll talk to you. Got a sports fan on your gift list? Avoid the crowds and get free shipping when you shop this weekend on CBSSports.com. Take advantage of this special offer now at CBSSports.com slash holiday. And let's introduce you to the Navy defense. Quessenberry, Bridges, Palale. Down at the bottom, the most appropriately named man to ever play football at the Naval Academy. <laughs> Wave Rider. Got a brother, Blaze. 
who's on the team now. First down 10. And Dixon back in the game. And of course, the key to that Navy defense, 52 and 53, those inside linebackers. Keep your eye on those two guys, Sargenti and Peterson. And there's that cast for Dixon. It's on his left hand. They hand right. That's Baggett. Oh. Wade Ryder, three weeks ago, their last game in the second half against San Jose State. Ryder was called for a targeting penalty, which would have caused him to miss the first half of the Army Navy game. The call was overturned on review, and Ryder eligible to start in today's game. Option left. Gia Benelli. Looks like he got enough for the first down. Uh, I tell you, a Navy is pretty soon going to figure out that Larry Dixon is not going to carry the ball a lot. With that big cast, he is going to be a blocking person in this offense. And if Army wants to establish the fullback, I'd be very surprised if 26 gets very many carries at all. Now, that was a terrific block. He is a Dixon. great one. Oh, yes. Boy. But I, I tell you, Buddy Green in a defensive group for Navy has seen every option, you know, for the last 10 years in practice. They're going to figure this out pretty quickly here. First down 10, they slip it to the fullback, and Dixon does get what we think will be a rare carry. He's going to have to obviously carry it in his right hand. He won't be able to put two hands on it. Be interesting to see. Yeah, I mean, that's the same direction he was going, the one he dropped, you know, mm -hmm. for the end of the game. A year ago. Second down, eight. Pitch, back it, gets a block. Boy, sure got hit big time on that one as he let that ball go. Take a look at that hit on yeah. A.J. Sure. This was the stretch option. The fullback actually leads. You actually pull a guard on that one, and sure got his legs taken out from under him. He came up limping. I wonder if this is obviously I don't know if it's obvious if they don't pick up yards. I mean you're thinking is it four down two calls. Yeah. Or would they punt. Third and two here just inside the 45. Don't have Got to. the first down. Yep. Don't have to. At the 40. I'm telling you you watch a lot of tape. I watched two games of this Army team run their offense. They're a machine. I'm telling you you know we watch Georgia Southern. Uh, put up big yards against Florida running the triple option. I think Army, when they're healthy, they can run this offense against any team in football. Well, these are the number two and three rushing offenses in Division One. I'm still fast enough to not let that concept go. <laughs> that pass is it's clearer than what you say. It is Division One, <laughs> right? As opposed to one AA. Right. Second down and ten. Auburn has moved into first place 550 yards against uh, Missouri will do that for you Army number two and Navy number three currently Ohio State with 318 that short motion obviously is the way you know Peyton Manning kind of lifts his foot up and signifies symbolizes a snap this is how Army tries to declare the opponent's defense with the quick motion. Matt Giacinta is in the lineup now. Here comes Sure. It's coming. Oh, oh, it. Yes, he did. Here we go again. It was the spear in the back of Army last year. Number one goal for Army going into this football game was to hold on to the football. We kind of said it Army can't beat Army. It's tackled from the outside. I think it was Brandon Clemens that got the tackle. Yes. And then Chris Johnson, number 46, gets the football. I mean, and that, you know, when you're, I mean, I ran this triple option. I, I don't, I would never want to run it again. It's not easy, okay? I, I get all that. But when you, this is your only play, you've got to take care of that football. That's all you have with your Army. Well, the ball goes to Navy. Long faces for Army.
divisional action the NFL on CBS tomorrow New England at Miami Jim and Phil have drawn that uh, warm weather assignment two other games early Jets at Carolina late Kansas City at Oakland and it all begins with James Brown and the quartet the NFL today presented by Southwest Airlines AJ sure the quarterback being consoled by teammates on the bench after he committed the 12th lost fumble this year by Army. First down 10, Navy scoreless first quarter. Two fumbles today, only one lost. They had five and lost three in this game a year ago. First down 10. Quentin Singleton is the running back. Gets the handoff to the opener. He's got a lot of room. Being chased from behind and going to drop inside the five by Chris Carnegie. Well, the first part of the triple option is the dive. And this time, the no. Oh, what a great block by the guard right here on the nose tackle. That is the key. key. Zuzek, number 64, gets the block. That time, Joey Gaston, number 65, was looking for somebody to block and couldn't find anybody. As I was saying, Army a year ago bottled up the triple option. I held them to 297 total yards in the game, and 80 of it was on the last drive. They didn't have any big run plays like that a year ago. Singleton's previous long run prior to that one was 20 yards. That was 58. Here's the option, and Reynolds cuts down to the two. Now let's check the uh, Verizon Red Zone numbers for the Naval Academy. They've been uh, inside now 52, 51 prior to this trip. 38 touchdowns, that's a very good average, 75. By the way, just uh, keep your eye on Reynolds as Santiago warms up for Army on the sidelines. Surprised. Keenan Reynolds has uh, run for 26 touchdowns this season. And they don't have a turnover in the red zone. They, you know, they've missed some field goals. They've stopped one time on downs, but they do not have a turnover. Noah Copeland on second and goal. Reynolds keeps it. Oh, yeah, here fumble. comes one. Here he comes one. Fumbled. The ball's on the ground. Oh, my. Looks like E.K. Bins, number 57, the left guard, ends up with the football. I jinxed him. Yeah, you did. It was a quarterback keep, no ball handling, just stripped from Reynolds that time, and it bounces right to the left guard. Jared Mackey, number 34, forced the fumble. There's Mackey. And E.K. Bins saves it for Navy, and it is now. Third and goal. They love to roll right on this. Over, overloaded to the right. Toss. Copeland. No! For Noah. Jeffrey Bacon, number eight, and who's been moved into linebacker decision. today. Excuse me, Vern. Interesting decision for Coach Niamatololo right now. Overload right, pitch right, stopped at the point attack, and Joffrey Bacon, the middle linebacker, was so good a game a year ago. You know, as Vern told you, he's been playing free safety all year. Well, in this game last year, leading tackler and middle linebacker, so he's used to this. What a stop by this Army defense. Nehemiah Lolo has brought on Nick Sloan. He's 8 of 11 for the year. This is from 20 yards out for the first score in the ball game. Into the win. Got to hit it clean. And he does. Navy first on the board, but they did not get the touchdown. Justin Trimble, number five, one of those who made the tackle. Navy first on the board, 3 0, the 20 yard field goal, and two. Big defensive plays, Gary. Yeah, and even before it got to there, watch this play by Chris Carnegie. I'm going to stop it one more time. He's in bump and run to the outside. Now watch when Swain breaks the line of scrimmage. Right about here, Carnegie is in bump and run with his back to the ball carrier. Watch what happens. 
he hears the crowd and then runs down Swain to make the tackle, saving tackle on the goal line. And then from there, the Army gets the stop. What a tremendous play by Carnegie. And the stop here from Whiteside and Trimble. And, and Joffrey Bacon. Bacon, too. I'm yes, sorry. Yeah, Jeff, Joffrey Bacon did a nice job on that play. Austin Greed will kick off. Well, that was some play by Carnegie. And Jeffrey Bacon with a part of the tackle wearing number six. We've got a Jeffrey and a Joffrey in this game, and the Joffrey is Whiteside, the running back. Oh, you got you. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> I was calling Joffrey. I was, I, trying, I was trying to be subtle. Oh, I got you. I got you. Okay. I, was like, I was like, I knew I had the right number. <laughs> Very short into the wind. Crockett has it out to the 31 yard line. Well, you saw Justin Trimble as a part of that last play. A long tradition of the U.S. Military Academy. That's Gretchen Trimble, his mom. And to the left side, Justin's mother, that is, to the left side is Jordan Trimble, a graduate of the of West Point in 2011. The third brother, Jeremy, also a graduate serving in Korea. How many losing games has the family? Well, seen? if you consider they were there for four or five years, I mean, you're eight or nine years. The Trimbles have been here for this streak and not got a win. New quarterback, it's Angel Santiago. This is Gio Benelli. Out across the 42. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really not shot. And not just because of the turnover by sure. Okay. Yes, yeah, you turn the ball over, you can get benched. I get it. But Santiago is a better handler of this triple option. Early in this game, sure was pitching the ball behind players. And this offense has to work smoothly. It depends on rhythm. And Angel's just better at running the offense because he's run it more this year. Angel Santiago is a junior. Inside handoff. Terry Baggett. Now let's go to Tim Brando for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. And Vern, I got to tell you, it's the ultimate Heisman watch. If you missed it earlier, we spent time with A.J. McCarron, Jordan Lynch, and Andre uh, Williams. And coming up at halftime, we'll talk with Jameis, Trey, and Johnny Football. So stick around. Now back to Army Navy. Vern and Joe. <laughs> All right, Tim, thank you. We look forward to that. Just to amplify a little bit of this triple option, there's one part read. You have to read it. But the next important part is rhythm. And right now, Angel has better rhythm in this offense, and you have to have it. There's the pitch Look for the block. Got it from Dixon. Here comes Baggett around the corner. Yep. And he, there you are. And he knew he had it so much so early that Santiago actually pitched it and then led. It was his block at the end of the play. Counter, fake. He knows he's got it. Now watch him pitch it and then just lead the ball play from there and get down and pick up the last player as the lead blocker as the quarterback. And we've reached the end of one with Navy leading three nothing. We'll return to Philadelphia after this message and a word from your local station. West Point class of 2007. With all due respect to the captain and crew of the ship, I want to say, go Army. Well, those uh, little spots are produced 
by the respective academies. And they're getting better. The equipment is <laughs> as good as, geez, remember when we started, they weren't as good. And first down 10 as we begin the second, Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson. Little guy play, not much there at the 40 yard line. And uh, we've talked about this, Gary, incessantly, almost 11 losses in a row. Can they get that out of their heads, the uh, I think they can, yes. Because of the weather out here, both sides are going to be making mistakes. I think that if they have some success moving the football like they are, I think they can get that out. More dangerous for Army was that fullback dive. If that gets established for Navy, then Keenan Reynolds will continue to make his presence felt. This is Tony Giovanelli coming around the left side. And you know it was bad when we first got in this series, but it, you know the last two years, I think toe to toe. Right. Don't you think? Absolutely. Eleven in a row, 33 points. Look at the bottom line. It's 35 rush TDs. Now 35. Angel Santiago, who had started every game this year in a three and eight season coming in, gave way to A.J. Sure, but replaced him on this series. Baggett. Santiago will keep it. Oh boy, fourth down. Yeah, that play was designed to go outside. I think uh, Santiago gave up on that a little bit too quickly. He should have pressed wide on that one and kept going. So you're going to see the reach block to the outside. The whole offensive line was expecting that ball to go wide. Jordan Drake made the stop. Fourth down. Army will go for it. Fourth and two. Dixon, Baggett, and Gio Vanelli are the three backs. On fourth and two. Option pitch, uh -uh. Baggett, uh -uh. nope. Uh -uh. Nope. Brandon Clements, number one, will yeah. get credit for the tackle. I think Chris Johnson made yes. the play, though. The yep. outside linebacker and probably the most gifted, talented defender for Navy just reads the quarterback and then makes the play. That's the worst thing you come you get a zero for that as a quarterback when the guy you're responsible if he makes you pitch and he makes the tackle you lose what a scene those are cadets standing on the other side of the snowfall and just a week ago it was a Philadelphia Eagles playing the Detroit Lions and we got what they got four or six inches on this same That's field right. And the last game for Army was in Hawaii. Yeah. That was three weeks ago. Navy was in San Jose. I don't, man, don't think it snowed there either. Both teams did talk about practicing outside all week. And, but remember, Navy had a couple receivers open throwing against the wind. Now they got it downwind. Will they try to crack this man-to-man -man coverage that Army plays very aggressively with their secondary to kind of load the block? the box against the Navy running attack. Keenan Reynolds, Chris Swain, number 37, back from an injury. Here's Reynolds. Got uh, three or four. Kept it. Reynolds, a star of that uh, win in overtime out against San Jose State. Seven touchdowns rushing, including two in overtime. It was a triple overtime game. See, that was one of the two that Gary referred to that he uh, rushed for more than 200 yards. They'll try the fullback dive, and nothing there. It's going to bring up a big third down. Richard Glover is having a great first half in this yep. football game. He is owning the line of scrimmage right here. That's the third big tackle he's made right at the line of scrimmage. I think he's right there. Hard to tell, isn't it? Yeah, he just beats yes, he does. Beats his man that time. I think it's Joey Gass, the number 65, and just makes the play. They third. start, excuse me, Vern, they start winning with those defensive ends. It'll be tough for Navy to run the ball. Third down and four. Navy leads it by three and uh, one of four for the midshipman on third down conversions. See if they don't try to sprint out and throw the ball here. Timeout. 
Navy. Rich Glover. The familiar name in college football about uh, three decades ago. Young man who played for Nebraska. Hi, I'm Richard Glover, starting nose tackle for the Army Black Knights, and my goal is to dominate Navy from the first snap to the last second. Go Army, beat Navy. Three nothing. Navy leads. And it's time now to bring the duck on stage in the snowstorm. Aflac. The Aflac trivia question. Which two schools can claim a Heisman winner, a Naismith winner, and a U.S. president? There are two of them. Now the snowfall is starting to accumulate. I can't say that. Accumulate. It's not that tough. No matter if you get it right or wrong, it's still coming down and it's sticking. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Third and four. The pitch. Oh, what a nice the lane. Play. Nice lane run by Hayden Pierce that time. It's, it's called the lane runner. He's responsible for the pitch to both sides of the field. Number nine, the free safety. He's got it this way or this way. Watch him do his job. He runs for his assignment. That's assignment football. He anticipates the pitch, doesn't care about the fullback or the quarterback, and makes the stop. Wonderful defense. Pablo Beltran is on for the Naval Academy, number 11. And Scott Williams is deep, but not that deep. He's at the 21-yard line. A little bit of a high snap. Oh, they went for it. Did not get it. Here's Williams. Makes the catch at the 17 and is almost immediately tackled at the 20 yard line. Yeah, that was a nice play by Williams because if he doesn't catch that, that's going to go inside the five yard line. Great defensive stop by Hayden Pierce. Cadets have the ball back, trailing by three. Navy leads by three. They have won 11 in a row. Some thoughts on the streak from players and coaches. This football team and their football team have never stepped on the field together. This is a one-off. Certainly we will use that backstory as a source of motivation and focus, but we are not going to let any of that, that history step onto the green grass with us. Nothing that happened in the last 11 years has any bearing on this game. Nobody can come back from those teams and tackle anybody in this game. You can't carry over points or subtract points. When we line up and play, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Navy's had a, a lucky streak against us since uh, about 01, if I recall right. Um, it's just one of those things that irks you as a as a, being an Army Corps player. But at the end of the day, we know that the streak really doesn't affect this game. The only thing that affects this game is how we prepare and how we play on Saturday, December 14th. How many days since we last beat Navy? 365 times 11. How many days has it been since Army beat us? I don't know, but it's been 11 years. You do the math. Well, the actual number, it's staggering almost, 4,396 days since Army sang second. First down 10. They trail the cadets by three. Two wide to the right side. This is Baggett in motion, gets the handoff. And Terry Baggett tackled by Quazel Bertrand, number 17. Baggett with uh, one 304-yard game earlier this year against Eastern Michigan. Yeah, and, and, if, and the plan was he and Maples and Dixon would be the backfield, and that would have been a formidable backfield, the three of them. Susan Robert Maples is, has changed this football team. Got hurt against Stanford. Yes. Playing Stanford, pulled a groin and never came back all year. Santiago right side diving dry not made and this is Z Xavier Moss number 86 that's his 31st catch of the season yeah, and Xavier Moss might be their most skilled athlete at the wide receiver see him miss that make the 
defender miss right there and puts it in a position instead of a loss to put it in position for third and makeable with any play in the Army offense. Third down four, Moss, the freshman out of Houston. Larry Dixon at the fullback spot. Santiago keeps nothing. Cody Peterson, number 53 out of Olympia, Washington. Yeah, quite don't just don't quite get why this one wasn't pitched. You get it on the yeah. middle linebacker, pitch it. I'm really surprised. It's just a, a lack of confidence. Now the coaches say you don't take baggage from one game to the other, and you know overall that's true. But you know when we asked Rich Ellerson, you know what's the difference? Is it their speed, their quarterback? And he goes, you know I think the biggest difference is they've been winning and we haven't. Alex Tardu on to punt. Sean Lynch is the deep man. It will bounce and take a mini hop in favor of the cadets. That's a 32 yard punt. Nothing on the return. Nine to go. Second quarter of play. If you like snow, we got your spot. Tim Brando in New York coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. It's Heisman Central here in the studio. We talked to A.J. Jordan and Andre earlier, and at halftime, it's equal time for Jameis, Trey, and Johnny Football. Now back to Army Navy. All right, Tim. Trey Mason on the basis of a couple of wonderful games toward the end of the year. Yeah. Earned his trip back to New York. I, I, Congratulations I, I, to him. Rest my case that it's no fun talking about it till November. It's a waste of time. Tuesday on CBS, the season for holiday epi episodes of television's two top dramas. Uh, of, of course, unless it's sponsored, then I understand. Right? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, don't you think, Vern, that this ball is going to go deep on one of these plays? I mean, when you got free safety making tackles on pitches, you got the win now. When is that ball going to go deep for me? Probably after NCIS Los Angeles <laughs> and NCIS on Tuesday. I'll complete the promo. Here's Reynolds, tosses it. Overthrown. Army was ready for it. Casey Bolina, the intended receiver. How about the drive chart, Gary? Well, I, I, I got to believe Army's feeling good about themselves. You know, they have that one big run and they get the goal line stand. Yeah, they're losing three to nothing. Turn Each team has dropped the ball a few times. But, uh, you know, this is a big stop right here with the wind the Navy has if uh, Army can stand strong again. Mike Eugeni is the injured player for Army. A little encouragement, and he'll walk off unaided. Actually, he is, he is. He was trying to make the tackle. He ran into the leg of Jake Zuzak, number 64 on the play. Second down, 10. Reynolds drifts back. Right side complete. Sean Lynch, number 87, makes the stop or the catch. It's only his sixth of the year. Well, there's no doubt this Army defense is predicated on those two corners being able to play man-to-man -man coverage. This time it's Josh Jenkins, number 39. You know, I mean, the, the Navy receivers are not Blazers. They feel confident. After the play was over, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 99 of the defense. This is a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. That's Robert Coe for Army, number 99. Well, that's something you do not see a lot of with these two disciplined teams. Very seldom are penalties. Usually they're offsides or ticky tack penalties, not something where somebody loses their temper. That's only the 30 second penalty. I did not see it. No, I didn't either. First down, however, on the 38 yard line. Yeah, and it goes from third and six to yeah. the first down. Touchdown, Noah Copeland. 
Still talking to Cole. Whose personal foul penalty gave our uh, Navy new life. And Jeffrey Bacon, I think, I was watching Bacon, I think he overran the play that time. Middle linebacker. Try for the extra point from Nick Sloan. When we were talking about early, that if those defensive ends can stop the fullback, it frees up your middle linebacker. Watch the middle linebacker. This I don't really know his assignment. Does he have the quarterback or the fullback? It looked like he had the fullback. There were two more guys outside, and it looked like Bacon overran it. Uh, Shaquille O'Talbert might have gone for the ball instead of the tackle. <laughs> late. Yeah, yeah, late. So the Naval Academy midshipmen are up 10. in Philadelphia 10 nothing Navy. Yeah that was a tough one you get a penalty on the third and sixth play. And let's take a look at the penalty. Yeah Copeland hits Co right there knocks him off balance. Now if that's the end of it no big deal. But he comes back oh, and headbutts him. Yeah right in front of him. that that's going to get called. You know Copeland made a slightly late hit. Right. Okay, yes, it could have been called. There's no way Robert Coe's going to get away with that. So the headbutt negates a third and seven circumstance. Leads to a first down for Navy, and they score with Copeland's run immediately. But now it's a dangerous time for this Army football team. You know, there's still a lot of time here in the second quarter. Remember, they deferred. They get the ball in the second half. They need a drive here. They can't let Nick. Well, of course, they don't want to. But if this gets any wider of a margin, right. it'll get very difficult. Maybe the most important drive or two drives for Army all year. Austin Grieve will kick off for the midshipmen. Julian Crockett is deep in case. And he will have a chance to return from the 12. Let's also salute this offensive line. Two fullback plunges. That means somebody on the offensive line. Look at this combo block, number 75, Fleming, and Bins, number 57. Watch those two guys work the nose tackle and then get up to the second level. That's beautiful teamwork by an offensive line, and it's really why these offenses run this type of system. They have undersized offensive linemen. They have to throw at the legs like that. It's the only way these academies can move the ball with their smallest offensive linemen with blocks like that. Midway through the second now, and uh, maybe up 10 nothing. Santiago. Pitch it. Nailed. Cody Peterson, number 53. You know, uh, you know, we've seen this all year, Vern. I mean, we obviously have had the pleasure of covering the SEC. And when you don't get in modern football play excellent quarterback play, nowadays you don't have a chance. I mean, that's, you know, when people get hurt at quarterback or they don't get good play from it, these modern day offenses or even this reverberation of a of an old offense, you know, the second version right here with Army and Navy. You got to have great decision making. Larry Dixon gets the carry out of the fullback spot for a couple to be a long third down. You got to read. You got to have right rhythm. And then you have to have a lot of resolve. The three R's of this offense. You have to have the resolve to run it over and over and over again. Third down seven. Not much reading of this Navy defense. They almost line up the same way every time. So 
Santiago picks up, pushes it deep, it's intercepted. Picked off by Brendan Clements, number one. Well, you, this is just this is just a tough decision for a football team. Yeah. Right here, a quarterback. You know, they're in this triple option offense. Actually, the guy that makes the interception is this guy right here. Hard to believe with a quarterback rolling this way, but watch what happens. He rolls, and then he tries to hit the slot back down the middle. He lobs it up, and the player falls off from the back end of the play. He lobbed the ball over the middle like that. Bad things happen Siobhan. at any level in any offense. Siobhan Lawrence, the intended receiver. Santiago. Actually, I think he was trying to throw it to Terry Baggett. Oh, That's really? an interesting thing. Yes. Okay. Here's Reynolds. He's popped. He was trying to throw the middle down the middle to Baggett, and the corner falls off from Lawrence's coverage. Got it. Watch. He's going to try to throw it down the middle. He nearly never even sees it. The ball flutters. And then the defender who's covering someone else makes the interception. Second down seven. That's only his second career interception. Second down and seven. Keenan Reynolds. Quarterback at the Naval Academy from Antioch, Tennessee. He pulls it. And Coke. Bobby Coe Co comes, Co comes in and makes a play <laughs> this time. He owes everybody one, doesn't he? And he made up for it there. He attacks the line of scrimmage, slants inside. One of the things that the Navy people say about this Army defense is it's a lot of zig and zag. Again, they say the offensive lineman just block the guy in the gap. Don't worry about it. Somebody will be there. But at that time, Coe beat his man again. Well, let's state the obvious. Third down 11, big play, especially for Army. Third and 11, 525 to go before the break. Unbalanced spot a line to the bottom of the screen. Last time they had unbalanced, they called timeout. That's the second timeout used by the Academy. 517 to go. 10 zip. Nineteen sixty-three Army Navy took place 15 days after the assassination of Pre President Kennedy. The game played here in Philadelphia. Navy, led by Heisman Trophy winner Roger Staubach, jumped out 21-7 behind fullback Pat Donnelly's three touchdowns. Army, a brave comeback, cutting the lead to 21-15 behind Roley Stitchway. With the clock winding down and Army going for the winning score, on fourth and goal from the two, the crowd roaring. Stitchway asked the official to stop the clock because of the crowd noise. The official had previously called timeout twice, and he declined to do it at this moment. Earlier today, the two quarterbacks chatted with Tracy Wolfson. Well, thanks, Vern. I'm here with the key players from that 1963 game. And let me start with you, Raleigh. Why was it so important to play in that game in wake of the assassination? Well, I think we didn't realize it at the time, but I think uh, in many ways the game in 63 really helped the nation heal and move on. So I think it was uh, more than just a football game. And let me ask you, Roger, why is that game still so important today? Well, it's, uh, of course, it's 50 years ago, and I, I think, as Rolly said, it, 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 it was more than a game. It was uh, an emotional time for the country. We had a president that loved... Uh, he was a commander-in-chief of the armed services. He loved the Army-Navy game. And it, I, it gave a feeling, uh, I think, to those that came to the game that it was, uh, it was really uh, all about uh, the commitment we still had as a country. And, you know, it was a horrible time for everyone. But, it, it, you know, football kind of let the emotions uh, go in a direction that uh, I think playing the game was very positive. And now, Raleigh, this Army team, similar to your Army team in the sense that they're riding this losing streak. And the next year, you came back and you beat Navy. What can they take away from that? Thank you first for mentioning <laughs> the following year. But anyway, I think there is a connection here. And I think as Roger knows and he's done throughout his entire career, uh, we were able to bounce back, uh, suck it up and bounce back from a very devastating loss in 63 and then come back against Rogers great team and we're able to win 
And that's what these Army kids have to do. So they have to suck it up, bounce back, and see what they can do out here. Well, thanks so much to the both of you. Enjoy this game together. Well, guys. <laughs> we're we're going to enjoy it. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Trace. I know Roger really well. And in the middle of that, he so wanted to say that President Kennedy was a big Navy fan. <laughs> I guess he did. That was on the tip of his tongue. Third down. Same formation. Going deep. Overthrown. Sean Lynch, the intended receiver. Reynolds thought maybe there was contact. He might get a flag. Yeah, and the back judge is calling it an uncatchable ball, even if it was. Josh Jenkins was beat on the play, and he gets a little tug. But the official said he could not get there. I think Lynch might beg to argue, as well as the quarterback. And so that brings on uh, fourth down 11. Pablo Beltran on to punt to Scott Williams. Ooh, low bounces. Yeah, lower and more effective couldn't yes. be fielded. And so Army gets it back, but that's a 45-yard punt. Probably 20 on the roll. Time now to answer our Aflac trivia question. Which two schools can claim a Heisman winner, a Naismith winner, and a United States president? You might know that one of those schools is involved in this game. The other, Michigan. Huh? We'll give you the list. That was, that was my guess, Michigan. I know it. Yep. On the left, Tom Harmon, Desmond Howard, and Charles Woodson, Heisman winners, Trey Burke, basketball, Gerald Ford, the president. And you had Bolino and Staubach on the right side. Is, is Trey Burke the only Naismith winner from Michigan? So, so a year ago this didn't this didn't yeah. really count. We, we wouldn't have had a trap uh, like trip. <laughs> we wouldn't have had one. No. <laughs> there you go. David Robinson, Roger Staubach, and Bolino, Jimmy Carter. Second down and eight. Right side, nothing. But seeing that list, Gary, uh, reminds me of 10 years ago when Pete Dawkins, a Heisman winner at West Point, and uh, Roger Staubach got together to convince Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside to come and be awarded as legends at the Dirk Walker Award Banquet. We had all five of the Heisman winners uh -huh. there. Blanchard, Davis, Dawkins, Joe Bellino, and Roger Staubach. Third down and five. And I bet you told the most stories. To to... <laughs> yeah, I got a word in. Well, this Navy defense is really stringing out this option. They can't establish the fullback. The quarterback is sometimes he's pitching it when he's supposed to. He, he's keeping it when he should pitch it. This time Santiago strings out as long as he can. Watch Chris Johnson right here, the best athlete on this Navy defense. Take the quarterback and then run down the line again and get there for the fullback. Uh, excuse me, for the pitchback. That Navy defense, as the Army coaches told us, they feel it's the best running defense they've played mm -hmm. in the five years they've faced. Fourth down and three dangerous times for Army once again. Three minutes to go. Fourth and three, trading by ten. Timeout, Army. That's their first. Ten nothing, midshipmen over the cadets. Two fifty-five to go before the break. Coming up, we'll go back to. Our New York studios, the Geico halftime report. Kim Brando, the guys, and half of the Heisman finalist class. That's coming up on the Geico halftime report. This field has to be getting more treacherous. Navy should get the ball around the 40-yard line. Fair catch called by Sean Lynch. Pretty good kick, 47, huh? Yeah, not bad. Well, we talked to Rich Ellerson, of course. 
You know, this is his fifth year. He is a one and eight against the academies, you know, with Air Force and obviously he's got one win against Air Force, none against Army. But, you know, he says, and I do agree with this. I watched the tape. They're closer. They're a better team than when he started this rebuild. Now, Navy's gotten better, too. He says he still believes we're within reach. He feels he's recruited strongly, upgraded the players, but it's the not winning the games. Right. They have not been able to get over the hump. He feels is the difference. Reynolds on the keeper. Watch out. And, that, and a quarterback, I think. Reynolds touchdown. That's number 27 for the season for Keenan Reynolds. Yeah, he's the difference in the game. Only one guy really had a shot at him. Number 92, Gordek had a shot at him on the play, but Keenan Reynolds is just a notch better than anybody on the field. And, and we get a lot, I bet you get a lot of Notre Dame fans that would agree with that. Mm -hmm. The offensive show they put on against Notre Dame this year. Lost by four. Well, that took maybe all of 10 seconds after the punt. Little quick motion. And it's a keep all the way. It's not even a fake. Good block by the fullback that time. And just gets into the secondary. Copeland gets the block. And Reynolds is at a different level. 27 touchdown. I think it was Mike Eugenie was the only guy yeah. that had a shot at him that time. Ties both the school record set by Ricky Dobbs, and it's the most by quarterback in NCAA history. Ricky Dobbs is watching this game aboard his ship, the USS Oscar Austin. And uh, we all remember the charismatic quarterback, Ricky Dobbs, from here's years at the Naval Academy. Yeah, and, how, and, how, and how far, you know, we saw this Navy team, the opening game against Notre Dame a year ago. And Keenan Reynolds had not taken over the job yet. Uh, he came in a couple games later, and then once he got in there, he was impossible to unseat him. Yeah. He's a special talent. And actually, if you talk to the Navy coaches, they believe he could run any offense. Mm -hmm. The rest of the guys for Navy have to run this offense, but he could run anything. That's uh, out of bounds. So Army will get a bit of a break. That ball will come out. End of the kick. Out of bounds. It'll come out to the fourth. By the way, not easy to <laughs> to go from life in the SEC no, I know. where it's, uh, you know, in the 80s most of the fall. Right, or indoor games like we just finished one. Kick off out of bounds. Our guys are bundled. Ball yeah. placed before the 40-yard line, first step. I did see four or five of our guys putting on the long johns and the electric socks and girding up. You and I, of course, are basking here in shirt sleeves. And, and well, we, we have heaters. I don't know. <laughs> I made sure oh, that you, you why, why did you give that away? <laughs> 2.38 to go before the break. Santiago. Right side, Xavier Moss. Boy, do they need a score. Yeah, I don't know if Army has a big play in them in passing game. You know, right. they're they're more deliberate. That's their offense. Uh, they're not obviously built for the big play and you know, not a lot of time. They do have timeouts. You know, a couple first downs, maybe. San Diego, Santiago, right side again. It's DeMoss. Brendan Clements, who's had a big game defensively. No whistle yeah, see, yet. I, I, I don't understand that. That's one of the rules I think that college football needs to look at. They're allowing guys to be pushed. I think that's pretty good forward progress. That's mm -hmm. a chance for a player to get hurt right there. It's all about safety. And when, it, when it gets held up like that that's enough watch right about here that's about enough or here yeah or here or here first down 10 left side yeah, got another, another one another yeah. nice throw came out didn't it came out 
Incomplete. Yep. Good throw by Santiago. But he does not control it all the way through the, the ground and obviously not a complete pass. Now, you know, scouting report sure is supposed to be the little better passer. But right now, Rich Ellerson and the staff just believe Santiago's got to be the guy. Any chance he'll go back? Uh, sure. Okay. Throws it again. Whoops. Third down. Xavier Moss. And Xavier Moss should be disciplined to go get this. I mean, it's close enough that that could have been a lateral. I mean, it wasn't. But uh, we've seen that before, haven't we? Have we? Artie, Third, yeah. Artie, Artie Lynch for Georgia didn't pick up one, and it almost cost them a game. That was against Florida back in uh, a little warmer climes in September. Third down, 10. 98 seconds to go before the break. Anthony Stevens comes on the field. Here's Santiago. Oh, and another draw. Can't throw him better than that. Wow. Lawrence that time. I mean, you know, they got gloves. Right now, all the old timers are going, we used to catch those and we didn't have gloves. Mm -hmm. So the putter is on. By the way, the snapper, the deep snapper for Army is Andrew Ellerson, the coach's son, number 87. Fourth down and 10. John Lynch. Let's it drop. It takes an army roll. Now well, Keenan Reynolds in his second year. What a find he's been for the Naval Academy. Hi, I'm Keenan Reynolds, starting quarterback of the Navy Midshipmen. I came to the Naval Academy to play Navy football and to serve my country with honor, courage, and commitment. Go Navy. Beat Army. And I can tell you, as long as he's playing quarterback and healthy for Navy, it'll be a tough victory for Army. First down, 10. 123 to go. One timeout left for the midshipmen. Yeah, I mean, more importantly, two for Army. Can they force a punt and make something happen here? That's a positive start. Robert Coe, number Ar 99. Ar Army will take a timeout, I believe. They do. After the shocking assassination of President John F. Kennedy, Army met Navy in a game that helped heal the nation. CBS Sports Network brings you Marching On, 1963 Army Navy Remembered. That's tomorrow at 5 Eastern only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. I had the pleasure of watching that whole uh, Marching On. Uh, we got a DVD of it. And you know what I did not know is that uh, after that game in 63, that Navy played in the Cotton Bowl and actually visited the Dallas Book Depository building. And, yes, they and, did. And, and the actual scene. So, wow. I mean, I, I did not put that together. 28 7 Texas, as yes. uh, the Longhorns will remind I, I you knew, quickly. I knew you would remember that part. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that Navy team lost twice yep. in the Cotton Bowl. They lost to SMU. And a fast guy named John Roderick and Staubach hasn't gotten over it yet. No, either, and, either game. And so that's the second timeout for Army. Now, it, if they can get a stop, they will force a punt here at the end of the half. Well, Josh Charles is the voice of that program. Army Navy remembered. He also was the voice of uh, the way we opened the program this afternoon. Look at these scenes. Uh, the last win for Army came in 2001. That game was played three months after the 9-11 attack. I don't remember Gala, uh, the gas being a, a buck 52. Okay. A beautiful mind won the Academy Award. Enron went the bankruptcy route. Look at the bottom line. Apple released the iPod. 
Whatever happened to that? <laughs> oh, yeah, they're doing all right. <laughs> Reynolds has to get outside. They're going to stop it, and they're going to have to punt with about 20 seconds to go in the half. Now, do you go all out and try to block this? Why not? Yes. Strung out properly. Scott Williams heads over to the side. 30 seconds to go. Still got five seconds on the play clock. Navy should take a timeout. Which they do. Wednesday on CBS joins Celine Dion, Ni Yo, and Chris Young for a holiday concert special celebrating family, a home for the holidays, Wednesday at 8, 7 Central, only CBS. Well, we're not quite at the point where you can make snow angels, but no, we're getting there. I think you could. Yeah, I think you're pretty darn close. I'll tell you, I mean, it's... I don't want to root against or for anybody, but a tight game here under these conditions would be must-see TV, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Well, they almost got one earlier. Yeah. Can they get one now? Pablo Beltran in the end zone. This will be just catch and punt. Joe Cardona snaps it back. Well, they came and uh, great punt. No flag. Yeah, great punt. Boy, that was wow. Talk about confidence in your group. He caught it, took a couple jogs, and rugby kicked it. 51 yards. Yeah. Lauren Scott, number 20, is the man who came close right there. Just a little shove right at the end. And uh, 50 yards away. I just think Army will take a knee here. Yeah, it looks, it looks yeah. that way. That puts it in the books for the first half. Well, that was big plays for Navy and lack of execution for Army on offense. 17 nothing Navy. Trying to make it 12 in a row. And Tracy's with Rich Ellerson. Thanks a lot, Coach. You have had a hard time establishing your offense here. How do you adjust to get back in this one? Well, exactly. We've got to just run our offense and keep making some plays. It's not going to It's not gonna be a, um, it's nothing magic. Just got to keep keep plowing along there. But that's the difference. Get Stay on the field on offense. We've made some first downs. We've got to back them up together, eliminate the big plays on defense, and fight our way back into this. Could we see A.J. Sure back in it? He could. He could, yeah. Thanks a lot, Vern. All right, Trace, thank you. That's the end of the first half. Our score is 17 nothing Navy. Tim Brando and the gang will be along with the Geico Halftime Report after this word from your local station. CBS Sports presents the GEICO Halftime Report. GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the GEICO Halftime Report. I'm Tim Brando at halftime of the Army-Navy game, the 114th edition. Well, the Heisman Trophy will be awarded in just a few hours. And, you know, we spoke with uh, A.J. McCarron, Jordan Lynch, and Andre Williams in our pregame show. Now we're joined by the three remaining finalists. Jameis Winston of Florida State. He'll face running back Trey Mason of Auburn in the BCS championship game. And the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, the one and only Johnny Manziel of Texas A&M. Welcome, guys. And uh, I'll start with you, Jameis. Uh, you know, you have uh, been through so much, and I think more than anything, America wants to know what you've learned from the experiences that you've gone through 
in the last month when you've been really judged uh, fairly or unfairly by so many in our culture? Well, I mean, I love the college experience. And uh, by me being young, I got to get better and do right things more. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I did nothing wrong in this whole situation. Uh, but, you know, I respected the process. And uh, I waited patiently, and my family and the team, uh, they supported me. So uh, I just got to get better every, every day, right. even with football. Jameis, it was really interesting. The DA, who decided not to bring charges, uh, had an interesting comment. He talked about athletes having been given much, and to whom much is given, much is required. I'm curious, you as an athlete, do you have a sense? I don't personally believe you're given anything. You earn it. But do you have a sense of responsibility that's greater than the average student that's roaming the campus on any college campus? Well, no. I mean, I, I feel like everyone's the same. Yeah. But, you know, in, in any situation, the truth is always going to prevail. So uh, when me playing for Florida State, obviously, as a quarterback for a university, uh, all eyes are always going to be on you, mm -hmm. no matter what. So uh, obviously, and I accept that challenge. I accept everything, and I accept anything that comes my way, because I'd rather me have to handle all this adversity and handle everything than one of my teammates being in that predicament. Uh, uh, Jameis, last year, of course, uh, Johnny Football over here became the first redshirt freshman to take on that big statue, uh, that big trophy. You've got a chance to take it home. Why are freshmen, redshirt freshmen, young players having so, so much success these days? Because we don't care about the upperclassmen or anything like that. We just come out balling. And that's right. <laughs> we, we come out balling. I mean, that's what, that's what we got to do. I mean, obviously, I've been put in a... <laughs> I was blessed with the situation I'm in. I mean, I'm at Florida State with Kevin Benjamin, Rashad mm -hmm. Green, Kenny Shaw, and got a great office line. So I'm, I'm blessed. I'm probably, I know I'm in a better, better yeah. predicament than uh, what Johnny was like last it. year. What are your thoughts on playing Trey's team for the national championship? Well, one thing I always tell uh, the kids from Florida, I'm like, hey, when y'all play Florida and Miami, that's y'all rivalry game. But when we play against Auburn and a, and a team like Alabama, I know guys on that team. Right. So that's my rivalry game. So I take this, I take that to heart, man. Yeah. And uh, playing Auburn, obviously, uh, my coach, uh, Coach Craig. I mean, I, I love, I love Jamie, Coach Jamie Craig. Craig. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he he actually prepared me for what this right now. Right. So uh, having to uh, go against him. And uh, the Auburn Tigers, I mean, it's going to be fun, man. I, I got to ask you, man, what was up with all that squinting in the Miami game? Can you see? You need some glasses. I can help you out. <laughs> I mean, I, I wore glasses, but, you know, everybody be squinting, but I think I got the, you know, my eyes just thick, you know, so when I... <laughs> <laughs> when, I look, when I look like that, it's like, I'm not squinting, but it looked uh, like I'm squinting. So. Well, you are squinting. <laughs> A year ago, Trey, Auburn was 3-9 and nine and winless in the SEC. How do you explain this turnaround? Well, it all started when Coach Malzahn came in. You know, he always said, you know, right when he came in, he said, we're going to have the biggest turnaround in college football. And, you know, a lot of us were recruited by Coach Malzahn. Um, you know, and those guys knew what he expected. You know, he expects nothing but excellence. So, you know, guys were motivated from, you know, being in the worst spot you could be in college football, and now we're just working to be the, in the top spot. Mm -hmm. Trey, in the show, we talked about your destiny not being in the stars, but it's being in your execution and what happens on the playing field. Is Auburn a team of destiny, in your opinion? Uh, yeah, I think so. You know, we, we, we worked hard. You know, we came from the bottom. Uh, as Coach Malzahn says, we came from the outhouse to the penthouse. <laughs> so uh, Wait, we're still working hard. On playing Jameis in the championship game and the whole thing we were just discussing earlier, you know, familiarity breeding contempt, what's that like from your perspective? Uh, this is like a rivalry game for me also because, yeah. you know, I'm from the state of Florida. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I know a lot of guys, you know, that are just from my city. So, uh... Mm -hmm. We're going to take this seriously, and, uh, you know, I can't go back to the state with an L. Your, your dad is no stranger to the limelight. Uh, a Grammy, two-time Grammy Award winner with De La Soul, the outstanding group, performing group. Talk about that a little bit. Uh, it's just a blessing to have him, you know, create me and, you know, make me into the man I am today. You know, uh, he kept me hungry and humble. You have any of his uh, musical skills? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> you got a few riffs on the field, though. That's enough. That's yeah. All well, at least you knew there was some greatness within, right? It's you always know. an advantage. I guess so. Know. Yeah, that's wonderful. Now to Johnny Football himself. Uh, Johnny, I, we've had a chance to see you through the course of this season. Uh, how have you grown or changed at all since winning the Heisman Trophy this time a year ago? Yeah, it's, it feels like a long year, uh, yeah. but it's it's good to be back be back with you guys again, getting mm -hmm. here, getting to see familiar faces. Uh, you know, uh, coming back the second time, running into people here in the production that yeah. that took care of me last year. So um, it really it really is a great honor to be here. Uh, it's a credit to to my teammates and, and my coaches for um, helping me and and pushing me through everything and and really 
um, helping me grow as, as a person. Mm -hmm. Put you in a sage role right here. What advice would you give Jameis if he won the Heisman Trophy? I mean, me and Jameis had a, had a good talk uh, at dinner the other night, and I told him, um, no matter what, continue to be yourself, continue to be hungry, um, and, and don't let this thing change you. If you were to go on and, and be a winner and, and be a, the second freshman winner, um, just, just be yourself, continue to be you, um, and don't let this thing change you. All right, make some news right here, right now. Where will we be watching you next fall? Man, I, I wish I knew today. I wish I knew That's the answer the wrong that answer. as well. I wish I knew <laughs> the, the answer, answer that as well. Wrong answer, man. <laughs> Breaking <laughs> news. Come yeah. on, help me out, Kerrville. Uh, I wish Listen. I could. Wish I could. <laughs> well, thanks, guys, and, and best of luck tonight. And thanks, thanks so much for being with us. And thank you for watching the Geico Halftime Report. I'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents the GEICO Halftime Report. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Halftime in Philadelphia. The Naval Academy leads West Point 17-0. Let's take a look at our military appreciation moment presented by USAA. Here's Tracy. 1976 West Point grad General Ray Ordierno has spent his entire professional life as an Army officer. Among his many memorable accomplishments, the most notable is commanding the troops that captured Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein. The 38th Army Chief of Staff Ordierno preaches the shared lessons of the football field and the battlefield, mental and physical toughness, brotherhood and team. It's all about depending on the person to your right and to your left. Earlier this week, General Ordierno was honored by the National Football Foundation with the Distinguished American Award for contributions to the betterment of amateur football in America. I also want to thank the hundreds of thousands of soldiers who have dedicated their lives to this nation and who I've had the privilege to lead and serve alongside in the most difficult conditions. So thank you so much for presenting me this award. Congratulations to all the other honorees. Thank you very much. Dan, one of the traditions of this Army-Navy game is the crossover, which takes place at the 50. Secretary of Defense Chuck Hayden. Field has taken on the look of a rectangular waffle iron as the snow continues. And moments ago, Tracy with Ken Neo Matalolo. Coach, a 17 point lead here. How do you keep things going here in the second half to come away with another win here? Well, we got to take care of the ball first and foremost. Defensively, we can't give anything up. We got to make sure we got perfect eye execution the whole second half. And, you know, we got a long ways to go. We got to finish. You know, football is not played in halves. And we got to find a way to finish this game. This weather, what did you do in the locker room to prepare for this kind of weather in the second half? We've been practicing in this kind of stuff the whole time we've been off. We never went indoors. We never went on the turf. We recognized that it was going to be probably some bad weather, so our guys are ready for this. All right, good luck. Thanks. Vern? Tracy, thank you. 17 nothing. As we get set for the start of the second half, along with Tracy Wolfson, Gary Danielson, Vern Lundquist here in Philadelphia, PA. Corps of Cadets will stay, so will the midshipmen. I, I do wonder if we're going to see Sure in the second half. He had that yeah. big uh, second half against Hawaii. Maybe he can pull a rabbit out of his hat. Put up, what, I think 28 points in the second half against Hawaii. He did indeed. A.J. Sure all on the ground. They came back and uh, still lost 49-42, did Army, and they came into this game with a record of three wins, eight defeats. Naval Academy Bowl eligible again this year with a 7-4 and four mark. Set to go. Army does receive it. Julian Pocket. 
And so the cadets have the football down by 17. Take another look at that hit. Yeah, it, you got a lead, and it's kind of fun playing. 15-yard 15 penalty, first down. Ah. And the flag. Well, Gary, we began talking about the effect of a 12-season uh, loss, uh, Navy over Army. Mm -hmm. Uh, we haven't seen anything so far to really indicate they can come back and get this thing going. No, and I, I think uh, Coach Niamatololo was pretty right there. For, uh, for Navy right now, they, they don't want to help the Army. You know, they don't want to drop the ball on the ground, give them a cheap touchdown right now, fall down and let them have a cheap one. They want to make Army earn it. And, and I think uh, what Rich told Tracy at halftime, we got nothing else. Right. We got to run our offense. Just keep doing it. You got to have a resolve. Maybe we'll pop a couple plays. That's their only hope. Well, they will get the ball to open the third quarter. But they are marching in the wrong direction. Yeah, second uh, personal foul penalty for the Army football team. First down 10 at the 15. Santiago is the quarterback. And that's a tough start for Army on the first down play. Quazel Bertrand and Paul Quessenberry are the first two there. Take a look at the personal foul on the kickoff. Middle right. There, tosses him down. Steven. Second down, 15. Pitch. Tony Giovanelli. It'll be third and long. Wave Ryder made that one, didn't he? Yes, he did. <laughs> you know, it, 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 we'll say that, you know, the more you watch this Navy defense, the more you do appreciate the speed they have. They just seem to make up a lot of ground on these pitches. You know, we were talking about Chris Johnson early, but even from the secondary, they just seem to run even on this slow track here. Remember last time in the wind here, what they did. And, uh, you know, that was a dangerous pass he threw to Baggett. Cost them an interception. Will they try it again? Santiago is three of seven throwing the ball so far. They will not. They will pitch it back. And Baggett fumbles it. And it goes. Well, he did not go out of bounds. He did recover it, but. When we were preparing for the Navy Notre Dame game a year ago, the coaches were raving about a young freshman, Chris Johnson. You see a good pitch there, just dropped. Well, Chris Johnson just made another play on that option. He injured his knee a year ago and missed the season, and he has come back, and you could tell why they were so excited about his ability as an outside linebacker. So from uh, the goal line, Tardu will punt again. Sean Lynch back to return it, backs up, grabs it. Number 87, not much there. Good special teams coverage by the cadets. Tussle continues, and finally the whistle. 42-yard punt, four on the return, and Gary take us through the first half trends. Well, you got to believe it's going to be all Navy here. The turnovers were against uh, Army, two turnovers. Keenan Reynolds. Showed what he can do when he runs the ball. He he is when he gets that running game going. He's tough to stop this deep offense by anybody. Sure started the game. Santiago replaced him. And you know the two big runs by Navy. Big run down to the four yard line to get a field goal. And obviously the turnovers. There is a player injured. Army on the far side. That's Stephen Ricciardi. Junior defensive back. Time has been taken, so we will uh, step aside. The injured player for Army is still down on the field at midfield. That's Stephen Ricciardi, but he has moved into a sitting position. Yeah, it was a very dangerous looking injury, by the way. I think his own player, Derek Sanchez, number 94, is the guy that hits him his hip to the helmet. Watch right there and he gets his neck bent back. It is Sanchez. Yes, see that his left hip from Sanchez right into the helmet area. 
Always good news when you see a young man walk off. Even with assistance. Junior from West Harrison New York. On the special teams. Well if you're Navy right now you're saying you know we can put these guys away here pretty quick. We got great field position. They're having trouble with our fullback quarterback just took it to the house. Basically Navy thinks they can dial any play right now. Chris Swain. Is the running back. He gets it goes left. Notice that the snow has subsided and uh, evolved into. Freezing rain the most two dreaded words in forecasting wintry mix. Ugh. Yeah. And uh, you will know notice also that the crowd has noticed that. Too, yes right? exactly. Yeah. You don't have a uniform on you might take the rest of this out one at home. Second down and two. And I mean uniform as in cadet or playing. Swain again. Well yesterday it was beautiful in Philadelphia and uh, we did notice that they were spreading uh, spreading stuff in the seats uh, some salt some salt, anticipatory right, yeah. anticipatory salt there just in case and they were right and then uh, earlier this afternoon at halftime we had about I don't know a dozen guys out here with leaf blowers turned into snow blowers and thus the look of the field now clearing the yard lines and the hash marks. for the third consecutive carry on first down and turn and uh, the updated weather forecast for Philadelphia wintry mix there you go drive slowly second and seven Quentin Singleton is the running back he has a touchdown run for the Naval Academy already and when this offense gets the quarterback running the ball well like, well like Reynolds, I mean, the Notre Dame people saw what can happen. They put over 400 yards on him with an offense like this. And there he is. And that loss to Notre Dame, 38-34. They rushed for 207 yards in the first half against them. How about this, Vern? Just look at the stats in that game. Navy had no penalties against them in that football game. Oh, that is that that really is a sign of both Army and Navy. Yep. The, the few number of penalties. Third and three. At the 31. Nice defensive job. Strung it out. Well, we were talking about the big plays. Remember the first one to open the game, it was Quentin Singleton. Got caught from behind by Carnegie. Ended up being only for three points. And then Noah Copeland takes it. Nobody catches him. And of course, the last one by, by Reynolds for the touchdown at the end of the half. 17 zip fourth and three and Army uh, Navy rather will go for it. Maybe they may be just yeah. trying to draw them off. Well, they're going to call one. I don't think so. I don't either. It's close though. Let's he see, did yeah. die forward at the end. Interesting. They on third down strung out. Reynolds on the play so Navy comes back with the dive play taken on very strong inside. I think it's going to be short. I think they got to stop there. They will bring the chain out. Another look from on high. Hmm. I think Jarrett Mackey from behind was the guy that actually stuffed that play a little slant to the field by Army stuffed at the point of attack and then the backside linebacker away from the play made it. There you are. Army football. Well maybe some hope you know at halftime Rich Ellerson had to be selling to his team that are still hoping this football game. Yeah. 
17 nothing. Army's got the ball back. Guess what day it is, huh? Anybody? Ruth, hey, guess what day it is? Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? <laughs> oh, come on. I know you can hear me. Guess what today is? It's Army Navy game day. Oh, yeah. Hey, Chief, how happy is a midshipman on leave? I'd say happier than the CNO on Army Navy game day. <laughs> Look like a camel. <laughs> the Navy coaches, Vern, were really questioning this spot on the play. They did not challenge, but I actually think it was the correct call. The goal bounce has to go almost all the way to the 38. The ball, excuse me, the 33. The ball bounces and then goes forward. I think they got the call right. And as a result, first down Army. And they desperately need to get something going offensively. First down, they do. This is Larry Dixon, the fullback. That's a gain of 11, first well, down. He's their game breaker, and obviously he's not healthy. You know, they bag it, Maples, Dixon, they need them. And imagine running the ball like that with that cast yeah. on in this weather. Raymond Maples, one of the really uh, prominent running backs out, Gary mentioned earlier, in the Stanford game, Santiago cuts it and runs it and not very far. Naples had a big game last year in this football game. Yes. He is with the Army team on the sideline. And you can see the snowflakes are a little prettier than freezing rain. Boy. Second down, eight. Santiago to the 30. There's a spark. Well, a great decision by Santiago. Finally, he reads the edge properly. Comes out here on the triple option, comes outside, takes that final dip, and that's what the quarterback has to do. Gets good downfield block. Was it Shoemaker, number 70, that it got a block? Yes. I mean, they're all moving so quick. That offensive line for Army just blasts off the line of scrimmage. See uh, how ineffective all oh, that Gosh. It. Wow. And, you know, there is some real, you know, finely tuned ball handling for Army to make this triple option work. And this time, Santiago never got the snap. He tried to force it to bag it, never really had it to begin with. That's a loss of four, second down and 14. It's got to be the third fumble and interception. That's five. Two at one lot, two lost, and yeah. three times on the ground. Second, 14. Santiago gets a good block, puts up a duck, and the catch is made. Xavier Moss. See, no earlier in the game when it was not handled by the running back Sanders for Navy. Right. This time Moss, a receiver, judges the ball much better. Same type of throw. You said it was a what? A wounded duck? Is that what you called it? I didn't it? say it was wounded, but, but it, it was a duck. It was not flying. It well. was not flying. No. <laughs> it took a dive, but Moss was right there and handled it perfectly. First down goal. This is Baggett to the four, perhaps the three. And let's check the Army Verizon Red Zone stats for the year. 29 touchdowns, only 40 trips inside, though, 73%. Second down goal. They trail by 17. And Moss made up for one of those drops he had at the, in the first half right there. He'll throw. No, he won't. He'll run. Gets a block. Touchdown, Army. Larry 
Dixon got Wait. the block. Stopped him on fourth and short. Had one quarterback run, and all of a sudden, as Coach Niamatololo said, we don't want to give him any life. Army has a little life. And this was a pass designed all the way. Angel Santiago did not have the play and just improvised for the touchdown on the backside. Daniel Grochowski for the extra point. Got it. Well, it started with the stop on fourth down. Knee just short. Point of attack, backside linebacker comes across, makes the play. Then trying to go right here, I believe. The corner route to the outside. Try and go back to Xavier Moss to the outside. It's covered well by Wave Rider. And then just a little improvisation and a nice block. Who got that block? Dixon? Was Dixon. It? Dixon. Yes. Great block by Dixon. Yes. A little light for the cadets. Rich Ellerson urging his team on. The Home Depot College Football on CBS. The Army-Navy game presented by USAA is sponsored by Verizon. Sonic. Chevrolet. And by Bud Light. Seventeen seven after that seventy one yard drive. And uh, Army will kick off. That was a good drive by Angel Santiago, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, he had the long pass, the first run, and then the scramble off the covered receiver in the end zone. Big series for the quarterback. The ball fell before he kicked it. Hmm. It's like Tiger Woods holding back on the with the iron. I think the cannon got it. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I thought you were serious. I was teeing you up for golf season. It's coming for you right now. Thank you. Watch that ball. Yep. Nice. Shooting low boys. They're <laughs> riding Shetland ponies. I'll tell you, we got a few cameramen that are ready for golf season. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> they all got thumbs up all over for golf. Yeah. Just dreams of Pebble Beach take wafting me to, through our guys. Take me to San Diego yeah. now. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's warmed up just enough to turn those pretty snowflakes into freezing rain. Well, in golf, they just blow the, blow the whistle when they were to go blow in. Blow the horn. Yeah, blow the oh, horn. Come on yeah. in. Come on. <laughs> come on in. Reach in the veranda for have a lunch. Desmond Brown. And now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athletes, one from each academy. Thomas Holloway, major in international comparative legal studies. And for the Navy, E.K. Bins, nine straight starts at left guard. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Bins had a big play, recovering that fumble early in the game. And good to see Holloway back on the field. He was shaking oh, yes. up That's right. early on. Well, you know, Navy has not turned the ball over in this game. They've been very clean, and they can't afford one now. Harvey's starting to feel it. Carry on first down, Noah Copeland, who has a touchdown run in this game. 17 7, 6, 18 to go, third quarter. Second down, four. Ball of the 39. Toss right. Copeland. Nice tackle, but a equally nice game for a first down. Yeah, this is the beauty of this offense right here. First of all, you got that fullback going into the middle of it. Then sometimes you use the quick motion or you just toss it to the fullback to the outside. You get everybody standing around trying to read it, and all of a sudden they're running the toss sweep. Another Army player yeah. has been injured. It's Co. It, it is Co. Robert Cohen, number 99. So the training staff out to help Robert Co. And we'll take a time.
Robert Cole, the injured uh, cadet, was able to walk off the field unaided. He's uh, getting attention paid to his right arm. And Kyle Maxwell has taken his place, number 83. First down, 10. Just under six to go in the third. Singleton is the running back. Gets Mac a yard. Maxwell made the play. Yeah, he sure did. Fresh legs. Playing defensive end. Doesn't. Number 83 beats the block right across the nose, exactly the way he's taught. Joey Gaston doesn't quite cut him off and makes a nice play. Second down, nine. 5.25 to go in the third. Again. I'll tell you, one more that? stop yeah. here, and Navy's going to start to feel this game and Army believe in full speed. One more stop. Sure, 0 for 1. He was pulled in favor of Santiago. And Keenan Reynolds, of course, has gone the distance as he has in almost every game for Navy. Yeah, that one big last rush at the end of the half. You know, this gives a 10 7 game a lot different feel to it. Reynolds. Quarterback draw again. Got him from behind. Yes, and short of the first down. Yep. Jarrett Mackey, number 34, been an active presence defensively for I, Army. I thought he had this. Mackey really made, came from the, this side right here to make the play. Quarterback draw. He goes off the tackle's block. Are they going for it? They are. And appeared yep. to have it. Just had to get across the line there. They actually, excuse me, Vern, when they, they actually go quick snap quite a bit now on these short yardage quarterback sneak. Here's the previous play. Mackey from the right side of the screen comes from behind to make the play. And then the quick snap. Bacon almost goes over the top to make it, but doesn't. And that is a first down, maybe. With a 10 point lead and 4.06 to go. Toss right. Swing. Double teamed. Jeffrey Bacon, number eight. First one there. Under four to go. Yeah, these, these tackles just go and throw on the play right here. Toss, they just run, 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 and just throw on Bacon that time. Another wonderful play. They just expect that ball when it's going wide like that. They are running for the spot, and whoever gets there, that's who they're going to block. Second, almost less than the yard. Play action, Reynolds being chased. Retreats, comes right. Let's it go deep. Jump ball. Incomplete. They might get personal foul on Kyle Maxwell, number 83. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 83 in the defense. 15 yard penalty. An automatic first down. Maxwell launch. Well, his helmet gets him right in the chest and then up into the face mask. He doesn't come down on him with his hand. But it kind of rides up from his chest and you know it looks to me like you know Maxwell tried to do it right but it didn't work out. And the flight came out quickly. Another look at it. Third one of the day for Army. I mean Maxwell goes I think 6'4 6 6'5 6 and he ducks down Reynolds is listed 5'11 and that's generous. He's yeah. See, Maxwell's right there. He said, I tried to go down to the chest area, but slid right up. And so after the penalty, the third un unnecessary roughness or sportsman like, here's the first down carry inside the 20. Chris Swain, number 37, and Chris Carnegie, number 14, with that stop. Second down. Under three to go in the third. Second down eight. This is the tenth play of this drive. Reynolds 
Mackey chases him, and then he is forced out of bounds. Yeah, and that's a good call, Vern. Mackey had, it looked like the angle on Reynolds, and that just shows you the type of re athlete Reynolds is. Mackey, number 34, believes he's got the quarterback, gets outside, and then Reynolds from right there, that looks like a good angle. Reynolds just going to beat him to the sideline and turn the corner. You know, it could have been third and six, instead it's third and three. Right. 17-7, third down three. They'll come to the near side. This is Copeland. That's a 10. Slid under him, but there's, it, it, it's got to be holding on Navy first time in the game. Number 86 of the offense, 10-yard penalty, third down. Copeland ducks under the play, but the flag had already gone that time. It was Tillman, number 86, that got called the wide receiver. The new formation that Navy has kind of been doing this from, and Tillman's <laughs> pretty obviously holding the whole play right there, um, is they were bringing their receivers down tight and then trying to run wide from that formation. And so it sets up a third and 13 at the Army 23. Under two to go, third quarter. Navy goes four wide. Two to the left, two to the right. Quarterback keep. Designed keep all the way. It'll be fourth down. Well, still a two possession game if it's a field goal here. They pull the line. It wasn't even a quarterback draw. This was just a keep all the way. They'll pull. Suzak comes around the corner and. Nice job coming off the block inside by number 92, you're getting. That brings on Nick Sloan on fourth down and six. Great story about Sloan. He missed that extra point against Toledo, and then he comes back against Pitt and wins the game. 34-yard field goal attempt. Pablo Beltran will hold. This looks to be good and is. Big penalty, big stop. Still a football game for Army. 20 to 7, 64 seconds to go in the third. And a reminder that our next college football game, December 31st, will all be in El Paso for the Sun Bowl, the Hyundai Sun Bowl. I'm looking forward to this matchup. That is a good matchup. I really do. I think we're going to get two very motivated teams to play in this football game. Virginia Tech, UCLA. From the Sun Bowl in El Paso. Jim Mora has UCLA playing hard every game, and of course, Frank Beamer always has his team ready to play. 20 to 7 here. Well, it's gone from really, really pretty with the snowfall to downright nasty with the freezing rain. Yeah, but right now, Army isn't noticing anything about the weather. They okay. feel they're back in the game. Santiago gave them some life, and they, they, they got a feeling now that they can get back in it. <laughs> Austin Greeb will kick off for the midshipman. Taken. Julian Crockett, number 18, goes right. Out near the 35. And let's uh, head down to Tracy Wilson. Well, thanks, Vern. We remember back to last year when Navy's backup quarterback, Rafi Montalvo, was injured in a car accident Thanksgiving weekend. He was in a coma during this game, and they all dedicated their win to him. Well, I had a chance to speak with him this morning. He is actually in the stands today, and he told me that he is hoping to get back. He went through such rehabilitation, but he feels great. And he said if he passes his neuropsych test next week, then he'll be able to join the team in spring. And guys, because he missed so much time, he's actually a plebe now, and he participated in the march on today. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Trace. Final 30 seconds of the third, and a nice story of a, a young man able to come back.
It's amazing watching yeah. Dixon hold that ball like I that, doesn't it. it? Yes. I mean, in an uh, ironic of the fumble at the end of the game last year, yet they trust him enough to play with a cast on the hand this year. Third and one. We really don't have a choice. He's so talented. They need him. Oh, he leaned a little. Yeah, yeah sure did. False start. Number 26 for the offense. Five guard penalty. Third down. Yep, just twitched. Right in the middle of the three backs. Yep, just a twitch. So that leaves one second on the clock in the third quarter. Lots of things can happen. Nope, nothing's going to happen in this case. That's the end of the third with our score 20 to 7. Maybe. We'll return to Philadelphia right after this word from your local station. And we welcome you back to Philadelphia, the 114th playing of Army Navy, a series that began in 1890. And the theme of this one is uh, Naval Navy the Academy's dominance. They have won 11 in a row. We start the fourth, third and six at the Army 39. Wow, full back dive. It didn't even look like it was a read that time. They just gave it. Well, Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy, you just heard from. A little life left here for Army. Yeah, big plays by Angel that time on that drive. But, you know, that penalty was huge. A big one penalty by Navy down there in scoring position. But third and short to get that penalty was maybe just as big. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Or try to draw Navy offside. Right. I think they're going to go for it. Fourth and three. Just surprised back back. Did he squeeze through there and make it? Well, I think he did. I think he did. Okay. I lost him. You know, the white on the white snow, but he kept just kind of pushing and going low. Has to go just past the line, and the spot is a good one. Hands it off to Dixon. Right. Doesn't look like he has anything, but just kind of spins and falls. Oh, oh, that might be a relook at that one. It's short of the line. And I think he may be short. He did not get across that line. Paul Quessenberry was It's going to be really close. Mm. Just oh, short. Boy. I mean, that was great effort by Dixon. I have to give him on that one. He had to hold the ball. He's got one hand, one and a cast. They give it to their most skilled running back. He runs through three tackles, falls forward, but just inches short. Great effort. Time call. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. Little sloppy play to open the game in the first quarter. Army with two first half turnovers. Fumble and an interception. They did kick a field goal. Here's the first touchdown of the game for Navy. It's Copeland, Noah Copeland, 39 yards. That made it 10 0. And then a big play late in the second quarter. Keenan Reynolds, 47 yards. For a touchdown is 27th of the season. 17-0. And then Santiago, after a big run, scrolls in 17-7. And that's the field goal from Navy that uh, extended the lead, slung second of the game. And that's where we sit right now. 20 to 7. And uh, after the unsuccessful fourth down effort, Navy takes over at the 44. Well, it was a bit of a gamble, I thought, by Army. I mean, they are down two scores. It's, you know, it's not the, the worst call. I mean, they almost got it. Copeland has the carry on first down. 
Rich Glover makes the tackle. Well, he's had a good game. What was his thing? We heard him early. He said, I want to dominate in this football game. Yeah. He's done a good job, hasn't he? Second down, seven. At the 42 41 official. Is caught and dropped. Richard Glover uh, again. Again, yes. Yes, he did. Yeah. Gets his man inside and then lays out. Makes the play from behind. And that brings up third down seven. What rain? No doubt up at the top that there's man to man coverage up here. Inside technique. See if everybody else has man to man coverage. That's uh, Sean Lynch. Uh, time out by Navy. Time out. First George time out of the half. Navy. 20 to 7. It'll be third and seven when we return to Philadelphia. football on CBS the Army Navy game presented by USAA is sponsored by Nissan Call of Duty Ghosts K Jewelers and by USAA we are back in Philadelphia the 114th playing of the Army Navy game had a full house when we started Navy now leading 20 to 7. This game began in a really beautiful snowfall. It uh, has morphed into freezing rain. Cadets, midshipmen, parents, and the 75 person crew of CBS <laughs> Sports are still here. Well, it's a big down. If we're here, we might as well watch a big down. Third and seven. Reynolds going right. Fires it incomplete. Interesting call. Mm -hmm. Roll to the short side of the field. You know, takes away your quarterback uh, scrambling option. Uh, that was one they decided on after a timeout too. Big stop by them. So for the set up this punt. Holloway has the running back Sanders on the play. Very careful not to have any interference. Everybody did their job there. It was just a funny call. Pablo Beltran to punt. Scott Williams will let it bounce, and it goes into the end zone. Touchback. Close. And that brings Army back onto the field. And I, and I think... Uh, as you watch Army track back on the field here, you got to give them, as you look in this game, because of the weather, but I mean, when you have Florida in a graphic about fewest yards combined passing, that's, that never, doesn't make the Florida fans happy, does it? Uh -uh. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> But let's credit that Navy defense. You know, this Army offense is averaging three over 300 yards rushing a game. This Navy defense has held them well. 130 yards through three quarters in this game. First down, 10. Santiago goes deep, and he's not got a man open. That was intended for Xavier Moss. Well defended by Parrish Gaines. We haven't called his name. Yes, it was a, it was a rotation that time. The corner came up on the play, and then Gaines rotated across and made it a good play. Second down, ten. Santiago pumps, keeps. It'll be third down. Cody Peterson, who's been active at linebacker today. Young man who uh, grew up on the Olympic Peninsula in Washington, wanted 
to attend the University of Washington was not offered there. And like a lot of these young people, wanted a chance to play Division I football. Yep. So he is now leading the uh, midshipmen in tackles. Third down, seven. Santiago got a little bit of a break. It's a. Uh, They'd be fourth down. Not going to run away from Chris Johnson, is he? No. Was it Questenberry that time? Was it 45 that got him? No, it was Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson, yeah. 45-46, yeah. yes. Johnson just eats up yards on this field. He's just as quick as can be. So Alex Tardu is on. Interesting series that time for Herbie, too. Three yeah. straight passes. Sixth punt for Army. Eleven eighteen remaining. Twenty eight yard punt. Chris Johnson with the stop. Maybe with the ball. My name is Matt Aiken. Well, I'm a wide receiver for the Naval Academy. Uh, my goal is to serve this country and to make my family proud. Go Navy. Beat Army. Uh, indeed, Matt Aiken. There he is. On the sideline, injured his knee against San Jose State. Said he postponed surgery for the ACL until after this game because he wanted to represent his teammates and walk out for the coin toss. At the beginning of the day, Matt Aiken, senior. Keenan Reynolds, sophomore. 20 to 7. Noah Copeland is the running back. Reynolds still has it, though. And a resilient Rich Glover, I'm telling you. Amazing he is, game he's had. What a game. They've not been able to block him. I mean, obviously, a few times they have, but he has made more than his share of plays along the line of scrimmage nose tackle this time he defeats the slide block from the guard on the back side that time probably binds and just runs in there makes another tackle second down nine under 11 to go 20 to 7 maybe you know one more score for navy it's over one more score for army and it gets to be gut wrench time pitch Around the corner, Joffrey Whiteside. Joffrey. That's the Joffrey. Yeah, not, <laughs> not Jeffrey. <laughs> this is beautiful this time. Everybody thought the fullback had the ball. No. Then the nice pitch to the outside. Block on the arc block outside that time. Everybody did their job. And Whiteside has the big play. Somewhere. Whiteside must have met Tony Dorsett because he <laughs> it was been, Jeffrey last year. Right? It was Jeffrey last year, <laughs> and now it's Joffrey. And the, the reference, of course, is when Tony <laughs> Dorsett Dorsett won the Heisman, and then Dorsett, and then announced uh, to Phyllis George that when he went into the NFL, his name was going to be Dorsett. Reynolds, no. Under ten to go. Thomas Holloway. You know, if you look at the fullback that has been established in this game, in this game it's been Singleton and Copeland. But if you look at the stats in past games against Toledo when they had such a great game running to Navin, it was Co Navy, it was Copeland and Swain that combined for over 200. And against Notre Dame, it was Swain and Singleton. So it's two out of those three guys. When they establish that fullback, that's the key to the offense. And today they're what over 130 yards today. Yes at the fullback position One second on the play clock. They do get it called mix up. Yes, it was Jared Mackey there was two guys just standing yeah. standing there staring at each other and go you make the first it was like a draw right there You make the first move Right there. I mean, that, was it Co? Yeah, yeah. Co is standing there staring at Reynolds and goes, okay, I'm not moving. If you don't move, I'm not moving. Third down, seven. We just added it up. Singleton, Copeland, and Swain. 15 carries for 140 yards. That's really the key to the offense. 
Notre Dame couldn't stop him. Toledo couldn't stop him. And today, you know, between Reynolds and the fullback, unstoppable. Here comes Reynolds, gets a block in the edge. Oh, Slips nice it. play. Wow. Athletic play. Yeah. Strung out well. This is the load option. It's just to keep all the way. Excuse me, it was not an option, just to keep all the way. The running back passes the fullback, and this is just a sweep for the quarterback. Shakes a tackle from Bacon. Jeffrey Bacon. Jeffrey, yes. Yep. And they're into the second for the first down. Just for the sake I of I got it now. It's fourth look, quarter. Jeffrey for the sake Joffrey. Of symmetry. <laughs> I'm hoping that Joffrey carries it's, it and is tackled by Jeffrey. And we should. Don't you think? I thought I had it down, but I had it backwards. But it's you got it now. <laughs> yes. First down ten. A nice cut back there. Reynolds. 749 to go, the clock running. And Navy closing in. Yep. You know, and Reynolds this year, and he admitted it. You know, he's a freshman last year, had that winning streak, responsibility on his back last year. He came into this football game. Army handled him well. Okay, they held him with 15 attempts, 43 yards rushing. And until that last drive, I mean, they were in, to, in control of the football game, and then he produces an 80-yard drive, big pass at the, in, that, in that drive, and, of course, he scores at the end of it. Second down four now. Reynolds, 117 yards on 25 carries. Same play. Yeah, the it sure is. Rich Glover again. Navy is closing in on 300. They've gone over. 300 yards rushing. I got to tell you, I saw Barry Switzer in New York earlier this week, and he said he tried to tweet me during the uh, tweet. Tweet me. Can you imagine? It's two guys I would never visualize. No, because. no. Barry's Barry's into it, right? <laughs> so he wanted us to know, you and me. <laughs> Third and one. So we'll see. Under seven. Oh, Whoops. double fake. Fake one way, fake back the other way. Now they call the play. Yep. Now they call timeout. Time What's the rest of that story? I mean, well, we got time. First short time of the half. <laughs> he said he tried to get hold of both of us during this SEC championship game because we were going on and on about Auburn had rushed for 550 yards. Right, how impressive and, that and was. I saw him, and with some degree of emotion and uh, some imaginative language, he said, for crying out loud, in 1971, we averaged 472 yards per game. Jack Mildren, Greg Pruitt, the wishbone. I told him I'd give him a shout out. <laughs> Reynolds kind of came up after that last third, that, uh, that last carry on second down limping. I wonder that's why they he kind of bent that right leg, didn't sure he? Got did. it caught underneath him. And they simulated a snap one way, simulated another way, and maybe they were just trying to give him time to shake that off. Mm -hmm. He's back out there, though. Third down one. He still got it. Boy, does he ever. Touchdown, Keenan Reynolds. And he set a new single season record for rushing touchdowns by a quarterback. And this was a design run all the way. This was not an option play. This was a called keeper. Zuzek gets a good block. Darius State, number 20, you can tell the play because he fills inside the block. He doesn't even arc block at all. One hundred thirty one yards on twenty seven carries two touchdowns for Keenan Reynolds. third and final charge time out of the half Navy it will be a 30 second timeout two guys to watch here number 64 Zuzak watch him take Robert Coe number ninety nine right there watch this block pulling him out and the number twenty goes up and leads up on the inside too. Zuzak just pushes his man out of the way and drives him with help from Gaston. And then the running back gets a little block, and it's into the secondary. So you're standing there trying to read the quarterback, and you get double teamed by number 64 and 65, and you're in back pedaling away. A nice call by 
I'm Jasper, the offensive coordinator for Navy. I'm just wondering if somewhere aboard the USS Oscar Austin, Ricky Dobbs didn't stand up right he now. He probably called the play and knew what the number was. It's like Navy will go for two here. Here's so. 26 7, 6 22 to go. And would make him a, a, a three, pick a 21 point lead. I mean, one more guy. We've only got 10. And out of timeouts. Ever seen a frozen goat? Hey, we didn't sign up for this. <laughs> Holy cow. And they will go for two. Direct snap, lateral, throw it in the end zone, caught. Reynolds completes a pretty nifty afternoon. Brendan Dudek is the guy who threw it. It is interesting. They were we were waving Dudek over to the huddle. When I said they only had 10, it was number 81 that they were waving into the play. Interestingly, I guess he was a key guy on the play, huh? Dudek says, oh, you want that play? <laughs> Here's the touchdown, the 28th of the season for Keenan Reynolds. We're back in Philadelphia, 28-7 Navy. And uh, it appears they are going to win their 12th in a row. Now, who said they could do that? If you stay in the fourth quarter in the rain, you, you get to get There you go. <laughs> the Liberty, they all were ready. Everybody yeah. had their shirt. If you look over there, they all had, were ready to oh, take that shirt out. Uh, more and more. Yes, there's a bunch of them. Well, you've got a bunch of, of uh, sh white shirts scattered among. Everybody had one. The old gray they line. They were prepared. Yeah. never know for sure you know the generals take a get a tape of those white shirts and goes you guys are not officer material you never know you know either you're a foreign leader or you're not <laughs> you're going to enjoy kp exactly uh you caught something that was very yeah, fascinating i thought they only had 10 guys of what they were losing they were looking for dudek and watch right here we're going to have the coach start signaling, where's Brendan? Where's Brendan? And they're waving over. We need Brendan. Brendan goes, oh, we're running my play. He trots into the huddle. And, of course, he's the guy on the reverse. Pitch it. And it was his play. And it's a good thing they found him. The drive for two successful there <laughs> is. <laughs> oh, goodness. Dudek, Dudek, all week. This is your play. <laughs> Santiago, they ripped the ball out. Did they again. get it? Yep. Think they might have. Oh, dear. Will Anthony recovered it. It almost pitched. It was punched out on the play that time by Cody, Cody Peterson. Peterson. Right. Yes. So yet another turnover. Well, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda, but you, I, I think the Army team, they're just, they don't match up well this year. They don't no. match up as well as they did last year. The quarterback position's owned by Navy the, in this game, and, you know, they had their shot last year, and they just did not grab it when they had it. Well, you said at the beginning of this day, yep. they can't beat themselves. Right, and, and, and they had to stop Reynolds, and they, they just did not have enough firepower to stop him. First down, 10. Here's the toss, delayed, and it's uh, DeBrendan Sanders. 
Army, five turnovers last year, and they add to the list of their own frustration in this one. Yeah, A.J. Sure early, and then the interception by Santiago. And this one, game's really over, <coughs> excuse me, over here, but... Hmm. Part of the storyline. And it's second down three now, maybe in complete control. Are you kidding me? This is the little piling on. It's do that. He was going to throw it to Reynolds. Interesting play call. I wonder if they're trying to get the, the record for Reynolds. Does he is he is there does he need another touchdown? Well, it's a rushing record. Oh, it is a rushing yeah, record. Uh -huh. hmm. Definitely we're trying to go back to Reynolds on the yeah. play. First down 10, 504 to go. And I think they're taking it. No. Keenan's doing a low five over here on the near side. And Jarrett Mackey is the injured Army player. He has had a terrific game today. Yeah, Chris Carnegie's like he's over there holding the knee in place as he waits for help. I don't know if he's got a leg cramp or what. Help has arrived. Yeah, looks like a cramp. Oh. Mm. You don't often see a, a teammate hold his leg yeah, like that. That was a little frightening. End of the play. There's Mackey, number thirty four. Yeah, he's actually limping on the play right here. Yes, limping he the whole yeah. play, wasn't he? Well, he makes the long walk from the near side over to the far. Suburban Atlanta, the yeah. senior. And everybody's congratulating me to know all the work he's put in four straight years of this. Not going to happen today. Nope. First down 10, 5.03 to go, clock running now. Demond Brown is the back. He gets the handoff. Comes left. Coming up later in the game, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. 4.35 remaining. And another player down. This is Mike Mugeni. And the Navy trainer is the first one out to help the uh, cadet. See what might have happened. Number 92. He was in the play and then. Uh, yeah, he's holding around. his neck. Yeah. He's holding his neck, isn't he? Like he strained his neck and just mm -hmm. takes a knee. It could have happened five plays ago, you know? Yes. Another look, he's in the far left. Yep, right there. This looks like a normal football play, sure but does. you never know.
Well, right, Eugenie goes off. Yeah, Eugenie, Glover, and Co. have had to battle the whole game inside. Well, his, that's the jersey. Yeah, right? his hand was inside. Was Heap's hand was inside? Must have strained a muscle trying to pull away or something. Mm -hmm. As soon as he pulled away, he started grabbing his neck. Second down and three. down it's now 10 to go on the play clock Ooh, boy. Darius Staten hit twice that was Joe Drummond wasn't it 54 yes first yeah. yes well, nice play by Drummond and then Jeffrey Bacon yes Drummond was in there obviously for Eugenie on that play Kind of Closing. Kind of came here. in the way Maxwell did on his first play. Yeah. Under three and a half to go. Ken Niamatololo with the lay that he first wore in his first year. Oh, they wouldn't Gatorade him, would they? Oh, no. That lay, by the way, was made by an 82-year-old lady from Hawaii. There we go. Left side. Inside the 10. There is Staten. Her name is Betty Ihara. She made the lay 11 strands and a knot to represent the 11 players. She is here as Ken Niamatololo's guest. It's the first Army Navy game she's ever seen. I hope she's in a suite. Yes. Presented that to him in person at the Navy Hotel. 2.43 to go. Number 26, the ball carrier on that one. Well, right now, the Navy offense is running the same play over and over again, and obviously Army does not want to let them score for pride right now. It's sure. just all about pride. The simple, most basic play that Navy can run, and Army's trying to stop it. Nearing two minutes to go, Rich Ellerson, been a tough couple of years. Zell inside is Reynolds again down to the one, 145 to go. And stay tuned for the game, after the game rather, for the Jeep post game show. That's on CBS Sports. Of course, one of the traditions of Army Navy, Navy is uh, which team gets to sing second. Right. You know, speaking of Rich Ellerson, a lot of rumors about his job. Will he get it again next year? Talk to him about that. He said, I'm at peace with all the decisions I made. And if they call me another, give me another year, I'm ready to go. On third and goal, down. So it'll be fourth down with 105 to go. Fourth and goal. Fifty seconds remaining. Reynolds appears to have snuck in. He does. And a little after play chippiness exhibited. Lunges across. Trimble put the helmet on there first, but uh, just after he crossed the line. You know, it's almost what do you what do you do if your name is a lack of respect if you don't try to score. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's not much you can do. It's kind of respect your opponent to try it, with the basic offense to run it out. Missed it. Oh, he missed the extra point. Nick Sloan. 
I do still wonder about that halfback pass. Yeah, the first Wide play of this pass. one. Yeah, that was a little different. Wide receiver pass. Well, these guys are saying, what freezing rain? Matter of fact, these guys are saying, what freezing rain? That guy's not, he might not be feeling well, that guy. I wouldn't want to be standing to his left. Any way to keep warm? Easy decision. Our player of the game, Keenan Reynolds. 136 yards rushing, three touchdowns. He tried uh, eight passes, completing only two, but he was more than effective and, on the ground. And also, in, in this weather, on this field, the offense they're running, no turnovers in this game for Navy. You know, it just had to be. Army needed help. They did, you know, they needed help from Navy. That's the first thing Coach Niamatolo said to Tracy starting the second half. We can't make mistakes and give them a chance to get back in the game. It was a perfectly pitched game by the Navy offense. Kickoff coming. And I'm looking down here, one penalty, one holding penalty the whole game. Down here, 10 yards also. This one taken at the 10, bobbled, then picked up. Julian Crockett. Now it's time for the Napa Auto Parts play of the game. This was early on. Keenan Reynolds to call Pete Medhurst of the Navy Radio Network. Reynolds going to run the option on the keeper himself. Right side. Cuts it back up the middle. Steps out of a tackle. 40. 30. Looking down to 20. Cuts it back against the grain. 10. 5. Keenan Reynolds. Touchdown. Navy midshipman. 47 yards. And he added to that total. We now have a 34-7 score with 38 seconds to go. Hayden Tippett. Final 25. Tippett again. 15 seconds. Final 10. Sweet to the right, Baggett. Not much there, and this one's over. Make it an even dozen in a row for the midshipmen of Navy. As much as Army's tried to build their team, Navy's been building their team too. They're better. Reynolds and Santiago, mutual respect for the two quarterbacks. And let's go down to Tracy, who is with Ken Niamatololo. Thanks so much, Vern. Well, the streak continues 12 straight now, and you're headed back to the White House with the Commander in Chief Trophy. But what about this team and the job they did, especially in these elements today? Just very proud of our seniors, uh, Cody Peterson and Matt Aiken, and all of our seniors, our captains, Keenan, our quarterback, and our guys battled hard. Uh, like you said, this isn't the best of elements, but I'm just proud of our guys. And this guy over here, let me talk with him, Keenan Reynolds, just once again, you come in and you're able to lead this team to victory for you. What does a win like this mean? And, and you break the record, the single season rushing touchdown record for a quarterback. How does that feel? Uh, it's huge. You know, um, you know, Coach said coming in that uh, this game can make or break your season no matter how you did before. it. And, uh, you know, we, we had three long weeks of practice and we were just ready to play. And, you know, we're just fortunate to get a win. I mean, uh, Army played us very tough. A very tough football team, and uh, we were able to execute when we needed to. Congratulations. Go sing second. Enjoy. Vern? All right. And one of the great traditions, the singing of the alma maters. Army will sing first.
midshipmen lead the charge to their brothers. And the midshipmen will sing second. And so it ends, 12 in a row for the midshipmen. 34-7, the final. Our next get-together, 2 o'clock from the Hyundai Sun Bowl in El Paso. For all of our wonderful crew who braved the elements to bring you this one, for Gary Danielson, Tracy Wilson, I'm Vern Lundquist. The Jeep Post Game Show is up next after these messages and a word from your local stations.